Kings of Leon. California waiting. Steve, the public have been waiting for us to return. That's true enough. All right. Yeah. They had the best of. Oh. Last that week. Was a joy. They had Camfield and us without Carl the week before, but it's uh, been a while since we've all been together. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant, and over there, with his little sunburnedy baldy head, little Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Wee. All right. Yeah. That that <laughs> wasn't Steve slapping me head then, by the way. <laughs> no, that was just him clapping right. at like Steve Wright in the afternoon. It's a great show. He's, Cause he's so- it is a good show. Yeah. He's so pleased that we're- we're a posse. Yeah. And we're all back together. A th three hundred of those cars had this year. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. I'd love to have three holidays. You've got to start putting the work no, in I there. Had two holidays though. No, you had three holidays. You went away with, uh, Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, well that doesn't count. It does count. If you book- if you book two weeks off the firm, you go away and you go, how was your holiday? I go, well, it didn't really count, it wasn't a really good holiday. Can I have them days back, please? <laughs> you- Oh. My New Year's resolution is to be nicer to you. But well, talk done, sense. Broken no, but talk sense. Talk sense. You've had three holidays this year, and I'm just saying you, you're in your thirties now, and thirties is when you should be really putting the work in. <laughs> That's true. To enough. reap the benefits in your forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and a hundred. <laughs> Carl, what's your New Year resolution? What about think before you speak? <laughs> It's worth, I mean, See, I'm allowed it. to laugh. I'm allowed to laugh at things other people say, Carl. That one- <laughs> That is a good suggestion! How was your holiday, Carl? Uh, It was alright. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> but that- I don't see- on the kind of- on these- on the ratio of uh, good to bad in Carl's mind, that might be amazing, because we never- It might be amazing, might the basis of anything. I'll tell you what, can we have, uh, you know, a cracking little tune? And then come back and hear about Carl's holiday. Oh, I'd love to do that. Let's really. keep it tight. Mm -hmm. Love and Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. Now, I can't put my finger on it, but that doesn't sound like the original. And no. it's off a compilation. It sounded a bit fast. I think the vocal was slightly different. If anyone can, you know, Put me out of misery. I, I think it might be in a session of the time or something. Carl, is it a New Year resolution for you? Another one. Uh, maybe when we ask you to get a song, get the original uh, single version. I could be and wrong, not so but, uh, but session. yeah, it does seem different, doesn't it's very it? Very odd. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we just remember it wrongly. Mm. But anyway, that's XFM for you. One hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. Carl, you went to Lanzarote. Mm. People said don't go to Lanzarote. They told you it was Lanzarote. They told you. Were they right or wrong? They were right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a bit ropey, yeah. Is it why? Just, uh, out there. If it wasn't for the, for the volcano they had, they'd be knackered. <laughs> <laughs> that's their, that's their big draw, is that's, it? That's it, basically. That's all they've got going for them. When you landed, was it really hot? Did you, initially, were you quite excited? You were thinking this is okay? It was warm. It's, uh, you know, we can't complain about the weather. The weather, weather was alright. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what I went for, but. It'd be nice if, if it just was something else. Yeah. What did you do all day then? Did you read your original book? Uh, no, I didn't, didn't read that. I read that book. Do you know the book that I bought and all the chapters were messed up? Oh yeah. But I, I bought a better version of that. All right. And I read that. Excellent. And then uh. Did it make more sense in order? Yeah, a lot easier to follow. Yeah. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got thirty-six of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? Yeah. And then when you got to the eight, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne, this is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well, it's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the rest in! Yeah, no, While yeah. getting some builders. No, seriously though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, yeah. What do you mean, fill him in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than a hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, volcanoes were made a lot longer no, ago no, no. than 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. What do you suggest? Well, How can, can they fill it in? It's joined. It's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is, uh, it was the a, big it was, plates of the earth are all joined. It was all a the magma's joined. It. With the with the trade centre thing that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. You misunderstand me. How in the name of God 
Can you fill in the volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're- like a carpet. Put it in the holes, the holes are there ready, just push it all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ah! I'm saying. Uh, so, uh, what, um, what exactly is there then? Is it just a kind of moon-like kind of surround with just kind of dust and rock? That's exactly- and... what, you see, I was there when the Mars thing all went wrong. Yeah. I would have just sent a camera crew there. <laughs> filmed a bit of that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And say, here we are, this yeah. is it. Yeah. Ignore the little coffee shop in the background, <laughs> yeah. right? This is Mars, because that's- that's where it's like, just loads of dust. Yeah. Uh, holes everywhere. <laughs> Side it up. Anything little little round-headed aliens yeah, complaining. Yeah. It's Wind just, just like Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so is there any- what's the best bit about the holiday? Come on, pretend you're Judith Chalmers. I have been doing. I would have done all that, I would have said that. Don't bother. Well, I mean, the hotel was good. Yeah? That was alright. What uh, was that like? It's alright. Just, you know, clean. That's all you want, isn't it? See, that's not quite what Judith Chalmers does. She doesn't go, what's the hotel like? All right, yeah, clean, isn't it? All right. Well, what was it like? Was it, what, what was it? Three star? Four star? Did it have a swimming pool? What was yeah, the room I'd, like? Yeah, it had a swimming pool and that. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if, you know, I think it was one of the better ones on the island. Okay. Um. Nightlife? Uh, Plus, wasn't really, bars? wasn't really. Any, there was a bar, there was some bands playing. Yeah. Uh, not very good. Um, food. Food got a bit boring. Yeah. It was always the same food every night, but they sort of themed it and made out as if it was different. So, like, on Mexican night, it'd be chicken with a nacho on it. <laughs> right. Right. And Chinese night, sort of chicken with a little prawn cracker on it and stuff. <laughs> sure. But that got a bit boring. Um, that's me just turning on my phone, uh, because I want to read to you a text. Right. That I got from Carl. I think you've sort of set up the holiday in in this text, don't you? Do you remember it? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Let's yes, take what did uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, make of it? Uh, Similar view to you, that they should fill in the, uh, the holes? Yeah, it's just that thing, you see, I went on a coach trip, right, and you go and see the volcanoes. Like I said, there's 36 of them. Yeah. Um, which, you know, how many do you need? And, and when, when we're on the coach going round all these volcanoes, <laughs> the fella on the front's going and, uh, look out your left window at the moment, and there's a, there's a volcano. And, uh, if you quickly look out of the, the right hand side there, there's, a, there's another one. <laughs> right. And on the left, it's just like, alright, we've seen it. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, yeah. that trip, I mean, we'll talk about that trip in a bit. Right, this is the text I got from Carl, right? Alright. Been up to a volcano. Been in some den art, dead artist's house who built his house in the lava. They said they would show me science with volcanoes, but all they did was chuck some water in a in a hole, and it shot up in the air. No dwarves in the canteen, no scousers here, but there is a Swede woman with a big head. She looks effing gormless with a cap on. <laughs> All right. So a little reference there. To a Swede woman? What's what's that mean? Do you mean Swedish? Yeah. Or she looked like a vegetable? Uh, a uh, Swedish woman. Hmm. But they've um, all got sort of. Quite big bill, aren't they? And I sent, I sent him a text, oh well, it's just good to be on holiday because, you know, I'm working. Uh, he sent back, so am I. Just been watching Sky News. There is a school for monkeys who want to get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news for later? Oh My Corazon by Tim Burgess. I can't get enough of that. I love that chorus. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. But it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's alright. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, try to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, I'm not really clear oh, about Jesus. Jesus. Uh, one, holidays, really. one big sort of like work. Thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the things that annoyed me was like, you, you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, there wasn't much going on on the- No, even any crabs to throw sand at, was no there? No crabs or anything, they mm -hmm. wouldn't bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little, little trip, that's when I saw the, the volcanoes mm -hmm. and that, thirty-six of them. <laughs> uh, so, we go on a trip, and the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on, if you go on a sort of a package thing, mm -hmm. you have these trips, right? And you pay about forty odd quid and they give you some wine to sort of make it feel like you, you're getting your money's worth. But, uh How many of these trips have you been on then? Uh Loads. Oh, probably about twelve. Four. More holidays than I've had, go on. Yeah, well, uh Yeah, so go anyway, on. So you're on the, on the coach, right? And they take you, for the volcanoes, they took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right? There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's, it like, like I say, it's like Mars, but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right? And, uh they sort of drop you off, and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at, uh, and a coffee shop over there. And you know, for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running, because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. <laughs> 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 don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's a backhand that definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they go there and they, they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah. yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. Uh, How ever, much was the coffee? Was it probably about, probably about three, uh, each euro, so I think it was three fifty. Sure. Yeah, Which yeah, is, yeah. I don't know, what, that's about two and a half quid in it. Yeah, they stitched you up. Well, I remember we were on a, it was a family trip to France once. We went to Paris. We got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was. Coach trip. That's quite a long coach trip. And at one point we were thinking, this is all, we're on the motorway, this is fine, we're making good progress. Suddenly we came off the motorway. We must have gone like 40 minutes out of our way, end up in this street, this street, completely empty, little French town. And, uh, it's pipe pipe outside this, what appears to be a restaurant. And a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat. He's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent. He goes, hello. Oh, thank you very much. Top of the morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, uh, come in. We've got food, drink. Hey, go upstairs. We've got rooms if you want to have a rest, eh? Or play around. No, it's up to you. And, uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant. And this one family went, well, we don't want to go in the restaurant. We brought sandwiches. We just want to get to the port. We're not interested. And they said, well, you've got to come in the restaurant. And well, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant. So the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach. <laughs> so this family were locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in, and I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fi with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> me, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there, looking, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, um, that, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside, and it was extraordinary, because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get <laughs> into the restaurant, <laughs> and he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists, so there was like pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall, it was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style. It's absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I, I, it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre, because it was so out of the way. Did it come, did that come before the coach, uh, sort of scam, or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about, but, um. Fine, yeah, that is, 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 yeah. Do we do, is that going on in this country? Yeah, with French I'm sure and German it's, tourists? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, that's our, our, our yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring 30 people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If, you know, you've got your favourites. Because you don't have to, the, the coach driver's pretty much God on those things. Because that's what we don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here, there's other stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this country. Well, not really. Not if you're going from, uh, 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 London to Manchester. You could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's, oh, there's places with nothing to do or see. It's that, well, those, those attractions, they're all, there's loads of them in America, but there's a, there's a few here, like, you know, Sheep World, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you go out to Gloucester, and there's a town that's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's, that's it, there's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going, it's a quid to see it. There it is, all right. I went to, um, I know it's quite a big, I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But, I, when did Shire Horses become so, so popular that they got their own theme parks? Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum, for everything. Yeah, possibly so. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could, you could think of someone that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain, because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. But this so, is, do people keep coming around going, I hear you've got a Shire horse, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Well, I can't, people come all the time to see my Shire horse. You should horses. get another one because I'd probably pay double for <laughs> I'd pay good it. money to see your Shire horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shire horse. <laughs> I know. Have you seen them? They don't do anything, they're not like monkeys. 
They're, 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 they're not like monkeys, elegant no. creatures, but you look <laughs> at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're if not they, doing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. you pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had a, like one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, they opened a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? Interesting spaghetti, spaghetti in different don't shapes. Don't know, didn't go, I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> sure. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, but uh, out of ten then, um, what, what would you give it out of ten? Well, all in all, food, point. food, location, Right. Relaxation, you know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's... Six. Okay, brilliant. Six, yeah. Next week? Where are you going next week? <laughs> You're not on holiday next week? I don't know. Go cool. away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. Five holidays. Play a record. That. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. Cheering breaks, mind over money, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Little Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. A couple of emails, different people have, um, have visited various, uh, tourist attractions. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see who's this from, uh, I'm not quite sure, but, uh, thanks very much indeed for it. Uh, so, uh, just a link here, it's apparently in Devon, Barometer World. Brilliant. Um, it's the world of barometers. It was established in 1979. And, By uh, one bloke who yeah. had a lot and yeah. thought I can I can charge a quid <laughs> yeah. for this definitely Here's the, out uh, of his own house probably converted back scuttle <laughs> exactly yeah that's yeah. not that's not a euphemism for a sexual <laughs> act um, but look at the uh, the web page here Rick and there's a picture of a beautiful barometer being held by a beautiful lady lovely who's definitely his daughter <laughs> yes <absolutely>. definitely <laughs> come on Kathy hold that <laughs> Dad no come on. Undo your top a little bit. Dad! <laughs> definitely made to do that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that slight look of I hope no one I know sees. Yeah. Just check yeah. out Barometer World. Yeah. <laughs> barometer World. Yeah, that's available. You want to check that out? www.barometerworld.com. Now, the, uh... barometers. Now, do, well, one, do they work? They have to do Two. with checking, is it the, the, the air pressure? Well, well everything. Air. But I, I think that's what it's based on, isn't it? Sort of low and high pressure, so it's gonna rain, it's not gonna rain. Yeah. Or gonna be windy, or but I wonder how accurate they are. I think in the days before um, satellite sort of uh, weather surveillance systems, probably essential. Yeah. Nowadays, as essential as hanging some seaweed out by the back door. <laughs> probably. I think yeah. it's probably similar. I think it's the same one as holding a needle and thread over a pregnant woman. <laughs> if it goes clockwise, it'd be a boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about a barometer is how. Um, how far into the future can it predict? Exactly. How do you know? If it's a case of you may as well stick your head out the window to see if it's raining. Exactly. This barometer goes, uh, goes, oh, it's gonna, it'll be windy and rainy. When? The barometer goes, soonish. <laughs> yeah. So, can't say, but so it will, it will, well, within the seven days. I don't want to be specific, because you'll have me. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll yeah, I don't want to, I mean, you know, I'm just a barometer, I'm not really, I'm not really <laughs> a weather really person. The information. Yeah, brilliant. What, how, what's in there that's, uh, what's what happening? In there, what's what chemicals are being affected? How does it work? I, I no don't idea. know. I I assume it's probably something. Wait a minute. Let me email Barometer World. No, what I could it be? It could be quite it, interesting. It could be mercury that's based on a sort of temperature. It goes up with. Oh no, but it's not temperature, is it, Barometer? It's pressure. Mm. So uh, it, it's it's probably just very fine. It's like a fine, very very fine needle, isn't it? This is almost as embarrassing as last time we were on. We couldn't figure out what the name of the leader of China was. Was it the King of China? <laughs> the Prince of China? Oh, uh, this is where we, uh, were trying to imagine what it'd be like if all the Chinese people at once jumped up and down yeah. and made a big tidal wave. Enormous tidal wave. But if you do know what the name of the leader of China is, we don't mean the name of the particular person in charge, but if it's a king of China, the emperor of China, the, the chancellor hey, of China, well, it the prime minister of China. That was Japan. Yeah, this is it. I don't know what's the big guy in charge. Is he still the chairman? I know Chairman Mao was important. I think he was just yeah. the chairman. I think he just governed all the big meetings. Yeah. I don't know. He just kept the minutes. Head Chinaman? Head Chinaman. The major Chinaman. Top, top, the top Chinaman. <laughs> 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 the number one Chinaman. <laughs>
<laughs> we, uh, do you know what, we're gonna be honest here, we, we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China, <laughs> yeah. it's embarrassing. But if you've got any interesting facts about China, then uh, email yeah. in ricky, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Also, I imagine, the email address to use if you're gonna take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did raise an interesting fact, um, I'm researching, I'm doing a show called Politics and I was researching yeah. and there's a thing about, um, uh, what, sweatshops. Online? Yeah, no, 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 sweatshops, um, uh, l like, uh, Nike. Uh, there's these facts, right? And, um, uh, that these, these people get, like, you know, a few cents an hour, and the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for a, a Chinese woman to earn his 5.2 billion, she'd have to work, um, eight hours a day, seven days a week, for 10,000 years. <laughs> but Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They they obviously don't want to. Exactly. They I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy, lazy, Rick. <laughs> Ian Jury and the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to, uh, Cumbria on your, um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'll just use one then. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Do you have yeah. any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premier. A premier. Oh, right. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if there's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think of that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think so, so some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten, right? One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's... Right. That does seem a bit high, though, doesn't it? I thought it was, I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. But I don't think so. Like I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, anything. Well, what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? <laughs> Because you know they go out late, so if if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it. They're not going to get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're all asleep. But if they're out at say one in the morning, well, it's going to be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, "The Killing of Georgie." Mm. A little fellow, a little gay fellow, goes out and uh, he gets um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric it says Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat? And he's closing them before he goes out? No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised him at maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out, gloving, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo. He's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna, he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah. Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have any of us ever met a gay person? I mean, the way we talk about it is just like yeah. have we ever met Chinese people? Uh, I've seen them. I've seen them out there wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever seen them. No, now here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a no. There was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't get close to her. She was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> right, and this is where I uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials, and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of being the operative phrase. Yeah. Uh, now, let's see how we read this clue. Yeah. This is going to sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue <laughs> number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde's Chinese, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was legal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry. Right? Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing, or is this? 
This is the clue. No, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. We just leave the entrance to my garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count because I know what it is. And what was- sorry, what were the initials? What were the initials? GG. Correct. Yeah. Right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist. Cos I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, no, when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it. Right? GG. G -G. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That's yeah. T. Another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one. We were sharing out the mail sheet. Right, that doesn't count either. Can we, we just fuck Nick? I know, what, I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't care, we'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three, we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Yeah. It's not messing around with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. And the last one. We're sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best one, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. All right, Ricky Gervais at XFM .co uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, do you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Oh, Just this is don't worry pathetic. about it. Have we got any prizes? Just uh, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish. The clues don't work. The show, it's. I mean, this is pathetic. Play a record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time, we've still got an hour left, boys. Hey! Luckily. Brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese, people f as fascinated as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think, Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were. We're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It it's not. no. If all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, the, yeah, but the, that, that, but they'd, that... Be, they'd be having babies. Um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be? Would they be walking and jacking <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's that is yeah. That's I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhorter or Norris, whoever's who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget Norris, I think. Norris, right? I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. A uh, one point two billion little Chinese fellas, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the through Tibet. Uh, or? I think it's the. I, I think it's the. Uh, Gate 9 Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St. Petersburg, right. right? And they go, and walking, <laughs> and shagging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So, so they cling. So, yeah, well, we know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when, these, the, when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Leave it. Carl, just, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because. A lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. <laughs> I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, it <laughs> was. <laughs> she didn't die. That was a, that was a secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she uh, she was like <laughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two thirds odd. of our life, don't we? No, but we'll... she she was like awake and that, and then she'd go oh, I'm out of bed, and then that'd be it for two days. Talking of sleeping, uh, uh, oh man alive! I went to see the last part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Why? Well, it's like a family thing now. Every every Christmas, we, my family and I have been going to see the Lord of the Rings, the next instalment. It's like a family thing. What will you do if they keep making them? Oh, I tell you, I've wasted now about ten hours of my life with that tripe. You can never get that. I can back. never get that back. That's what Peter Jackson owes me. Ten hours now he owes me of my life. It is absolute drivel. Why not? I, we've said this before. I don't want to harp on again about it, but I cannot fathom why everyone is so excited and loves these films so much. Like you say, people. Reviews saying it's the best film ever. ever. I think this is the greatest movie I'll ever see. And I don't 
It's like they go, oh, but look at all the fight sequences. But Tolkien being up there in literature, like, you know what I mean? It's sort of like Shakespeare. Tolkien. No! Yeah. No, 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 But what is it that he's writing about exactly? I don't know. Little midget fellas who can't get shoes. <laughs> I mean, I've got big feet. I've got size 14. I can get shoes. Oh, God. So but not I know, from men. But I know, it, it is like, it's like, um, uh, 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 Harry Potter taken seriously. Yeah. But I know who's watching it. It's like these people who are watching it are obviously nerds. People who live in Forbidden Planet. They love it. They can't believe their luck. It's but that's like, the core audience, but it's obviously bigger than that. But then, but then it's also people who can think they have a go, like menopausal women thinking, well, I'll write a book then. <laughs> the, the, Gl Globlin came into the cave. <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and they're, and they're sort of like 13 year old sons who've never shown an interest in anything except glue now <laughs> yeah. writes orc <laughs> yeah, exactly. on his exercise book and so they're loving it it's like <laughs> yeah it, oh it's God. Like uniting bringing people together but at the end right i mean it's taken them now like nine hours to get from one part of middle earth to the end to the other end so they can get destroy the ring the evil ring uh, did they do a line was it i don't know what they like these little chinese into. fellas and um it's taken them nine hours of their time and my life as yeah. well to get there and, uh, at the end, they, they all say goodbye. They do it in real time. Why oh. don't they edit it? <laughs> oh. I mean, that's what it felt like. It really, <laughs> yeah. it can't have, it must have taken them less time, you know, within the sort of logic of the book to get there than it did to me to watch it. <laughs> and, um, at the end, they, they sort of say goodbye to each other and they all hug. So there's like, you know, there's little midget one, you know, Frido, Fr Frodo, Frida, saying goodbye to, you know, Bjorn. What are and they Benny. called in the thing? Because uh, are they PC in it? Are they called like midgets and dwarves? No, they're called uh, hobbits. Oh, are they? Yeah. So we should call small people hobbits from yes. now on. That's what they are, just to make it kind of topical, and they'll like that as well. Give them sort of, you know. So if you see a little on the way home, if you saw a little midget fella, four foot <laughs> midget fella, just call, say, "Excuse me, hobbit." Yeah. Okay, let's call him Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> He'd like it. He'd love it because everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. They love it. No, but everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The end, if you ever get to the end, they uh, they all hug each other. They say, well, basically Frodo has to say goodbye to all his other little fellas, and so he's <laughs> hugging us. I don't know how many of them there are, and he's hugging them, right? And it is the most interminable thing I've ever seen. It's like the music's playing. They look into each other's eyes. He hugs them. He hugs. They pull back. They look at each other again. That's like, I will never see each other again. Then he hugs the next one, and the, I was just screaming. I was thinking, hug, just one big group hug. Yeah. Then we can get out of Like it. an American football team. Exactly. Just go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, knock Not heads. each individual one. Oh. I mean, it's dragging on God. and on and on. And apparently on the DVD, there's like an extra sort of 20 minutes of extra footage of scenes he's cut out. Who was oh. watching this tripe? Uh, Who cares? I don't know. I genuinely, have we, I couldn't. Have we lost some of our popularity by slagging off Lord of the Rings? I don't care. Screw them. If you love it, if you, if you can't live without Lord of the Rings, screw you. I don't want you as a listener. I can't. <laughs> Fathom it. Really, Rick, it's not like being, I'm trying to be wayward or controversial. I can't get my head around the popularity. But doesn't Harry Potter annoy you as well, though? Yeah, but it's, at least it's kind of over in an hour and a half. Is it? I haven't seen it. But I went uh, to the toilet three times during the course of the film. Really? It's unbelievable. The woman sat next Sexy to me. Sexy stuff in it, was there? <laughs> <laughs> Some of those little pixies with the pointed ears. <laughs> it just took me back to, all, you know, Mr. Spock. Oh. <laughs> all those glorious days. But, um, <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it really is just. I mean, have you seen any of them? You've not bothered. I've seen one, and <sighs> it was long, and I thought it was nicely filmed, and I thought, well, okay, I'll just get through it. I think, I even think, it, you know, uh, it was just a list of, oh, and here come the orcs. <laughs> exactly. Right, okay, we'll see the orcs now. Yeah. But it's like people go, oh, look at the amazing <sighs> fight sequences, the amazing immense battles. And it's true, he's got thousands of actors and stuff on horses, brilliant, but I'm not impressed by good time management. No. Well done, he's got all those people together, he's orchestrated it, well done. But yeah. you've got, it's got to be more interesting. My friend summed it up. He said that the Lord of the Rings films, they're like the film equivalent of an Enya song. Yeah. And that to me is exactly yeah, right. Like exactly. The billowing dresses, <laughs> slow yeah, mo yeah. musical moments. <laughs> that's good. People that's riding good. majestically on horses. <laughs> Enya. Constantly oh. riding majestically everywhere. Dido's taken over from Enya in that. Well, so. I've got so. a confession to make. Go on. I like that latest Dido song. No, play it, so I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I thought I'd never. I don't Rick, know what to say. Let me explain something to you about Dido. Oh God. Baby, come on, come on down. Bite in bottles, Richard Ashcroft on XFM. We've had an email which I think I suppose puts my hatred of Lord of the Rings into perspective. It says, "Yeah, you may have spent ten hours of your life wasting." Uh, your time with uh, Lord of the Rings, but imagine how many hours of people's lives we, this show, have uh, wasted for <laughs> Yeah, that's true, yeah. I suppose it does, you know, balance. <laughs> Two hours uh, a week for exactly. a couple of years. <laughs> we can never give that back to <laughs> it's, it's, I know, it's, it mounts up, doesn't it? Yeah.
We should be doing some kind of community service for people, you know, maybe popping around. Well, this is community service, isn't it? Because Carl, it makes his brain work a little bit, True. and it, you know, it keeps him, keeps him, uh, you know, from going on holiday, <laughs> sort of for two hours a week, which yeah. is good. Uh, we um spent New Year's Eve together, me and Carl. Oh yeah. It was me and Jane, Carl and Suzanne. Her hair doesn't really look like Dave Hill. I, I must <laughs> must confess. You didn't see it when it was done though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had the coat on that you bought her to say sorry though, didn't she? Yeah. And uh, Martin Freeman and his girlfriend Amanda mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 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 Glyn and um, we all went for a meal mm -hmm. and then we all went back to ours and uh, sort of um, saw in the new year and all that and saw all the fireworks and then in the wee hours when just the drinking seriously starts, we started playing parlour games mm -hmm. and do you know that game when you go around started off like with um pop bands or rock bands you have to uh, say a, a a band and then they have to come up with a band immediately that starts with the letter the old, that your band ended with right so suede e erasure do you know what i mean yeah, go around yeah. we did that right and then we had to change that because people were sort of using this, the same ones crop up so i said we'll do animals we're doing animals and uh i gave carl one i think carl panicked he had to go, do, do it quite quick I want to just test it on you. Okay. Um. Is this bands? What, what is it? Uh, I said, now what did I say? Uh, so, oh, so we are, so it, but basically I said an animal and it ended with E. Okay, so I go, I go, skate. Eagle. There you go. Yeah, but hang on, I think I was the third person. Right, so, think of another one. Uh, eel. Yeah, I had that, yeah, I did that one. Alright. Right. Yeah, a lot of E's coming up, elephant. Yeah. Do you know what Carl said? Go on. Ready? Yep. Egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in a sense. I, I went, suppose. Egg? He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, no, wrong. He went, well, it, what? And then Martin came to his rescue and went, well, what is an egg? Animal, vegetable, miserable. I said, well, it's animal, but it's a, you can't have egg. But what, would you, you have a then? tadpole? Well, uh, yes. Yeah, because it's a larval stage. Yeah, no, but egg, you might as well have leg. <laughs> or eye. Uterus. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't count. <laughs> egg, you panicked. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I still think I'm right. Well, you're not right. Mm. We, were, we were naming, you know. Bit of fun, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You mean, why obey the rules? It's exactly, yeah. No, that, that is true. Don't that bother is the true. rules. That is you true. You had the fireworks in the year, did you? Yeah. What, you had them yourself? No, you no, no, no. Them? You could tell across the river, we could see them. But, uh, actually, very impressive. And I'll tell you what, they got it right this year. Instead of two hours of letting off fireworks, people were going, oh, can we go now? It was three minutes, and they spent a million pounds on the three minutes. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you can stand, three minutes of fireworks. Oh. To me, fireworks are like watching Lord of the Rings. Exactly, absolutely. I've never been impressed as a child, never been impressed. I've never been impressed as an adult. But, a big bang, a huge big explosion, that'll do me. I used to go to, they used to have little community uh, fireworks displays at Christmas, things like that, near our school, maybe in the school or at the local kind of community centre. And I used to go along to them with the family and everything, get the sparklers, and they would have the fireworks, oh, and that would be, and I just bored silly. And I always thought that if the guy organising it had wheeled out an enormous firework, yeah. climbed in, gone, last one to the moon's a bender, <laughs> and then shot off. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have been, yeah! That'd be really, oh, That'd be good, yeah. Very oh, just do you reckon I could take out that church? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, money on it. Go yeah, on, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be worth it, wouldn't it? But little zzzz, another one. Oh, Christ. So a friend of mine was telling me that they once had some indoor fireworks. Which apparently is just, I mean, imagine that. What? Who needs indoor fireworks? Well, I think that's just little, yeah. I think w one of the things, we got indoor fireworks once when I was little, and I remember one of the fireworks was that little celluloid fish that you put in the palm of your hand. Of course. And he goes, oh, future. you're sexy. <laughs> yeah. What, it curled up because of the heat of your hand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. You're dead. It didn't curl. He, actually, it's granddad. He's dead. <laughs> yes. His hands are cold. Oh, no. That's the only way that that would be, oh, yeah. That's well, the only test. How long did you discover he was dead? We used one of those predictive fish. It came out dead. <laughs> yeah. Just flapped. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a good time though, Carl? What, at your place? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? We danced, didn't we? A bit of a dance. Well, the two of you together? Yeah, Amanda had got one of those, uh, DVD films. Uh, no, straight to, you know, DV cameras. cameras. It goes right. straight to, um... DVD. Yeah, okay. amazing, right? And, uh, Carl was doing his moonwalking, I was sort of doing some sort of jazz 
step, wasn't I, sort of like Michael Jackson. Uh, 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 I ended up jumping up on the couch with both feet and falling straight back on my back. Of course you did. I can't believe I was alright. Yeah. What's the chance of that? It's when you're drunk that it, it, you sort of like, you revert to childhood and you sort of bounce. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, luckily- Is I that can... DVD gonna be available in the shops later this <laughs> week? <laughs> yeah! Track one, side one, the first Talking Heads album, uh, Uh Oh Love Comes to Town. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. Well, I think it's Rockbuster's result, isn't Ooh. it? Okay. Alright. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you want the prizes, by the way? Not really. Not bothered? No. Alright, some videos and DVDs yeah, and that, yeah. some good stuff. VHS there. hype. Mm hmm. Couple. 4.99. Is that one TV about weather? titles, what? There's the weather one. That's gonna be on telly. Donald McIntyre. Oh, yeah. That's, that's in there, if you want that. Yeah. Um. He reckons Donald McIntyre ripped him off, because he did a thing about how much it costs to, to have a chimp, cheap as chimps. What was the only thing you think someone ripped you off? A uh, Rockbusters? Ken, Some... Ken Baruch on Radio 2 is doing Songs of Phrase. He was doing that over Christmas. Was I it? said one week off, he's in there. <laughs> and when he heard that Donald McIntyre was doing a programme about wind, he thought he was moving on Auntie, Auntie Nora. <laughs> right. So, uh, the first one, uh, will you leave the entrance to my garden alone, right? That was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth, Gareth. I, what, what would you Gareth, Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a, what's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates, Gareth, yeah, Gareth, Gareth, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth, Gareth Gates, Gates, the bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Get, leave my, Leave my entrance alone, though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, the gate Gareth, to the garden. Well, no, we're not a gate bit, but what's Gareth got to the do with it? The second one was, ignorance. don't, don't phone, but you can send me a message on, yeah. uh, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just- No, it's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you'd have to Texas. say text, uh, me. Texas. Text, what do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was, uh, we were sharing out the, uh, the male sheep and that, right? Yeah. Uh, I got, I got the best one. DG, right? We're sharing out the male sheep. Get to it! It one. doesn't work anyway, get to DG. it, what is it? Delta Good Ram. <laughs> Delta Good Ram? <laughs> you were Delta Good Ram? Delta Good Ram. Alright, so who's, who's the winner? <laughs> we're gonna give it to uh, Stephen Gunning from Tooting, he's got all of those right, I don't know how, but well done to him and he wins, um, some crap in a jiffy bag. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you too, Alex of him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Snow Patrol and Run oh. on XFM 104.9. Yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. So everyone had a good Christmas though, yeah? Really, Carl, even though it was like a little bit lands of it was a nice Christmas. Yeah. Did what, you... what was the book you read, by the way? Someone just emailed in and wanted to know. What was the book yeah, you read? It was the governor. The governor? Yeah. Right, okay. Did you buy Susanna a gift in the end? Which she, you surprised yeah, her with? Yeah, I did, yeah. After that show that we did before Christmas, yeah. I was walking home thinking, oh. Might as well treat her then. Yeah. Um, went and got her a, a necklace. Nice. Actually, uh, she said she wanted a necklace, but I didn't know which one, but went and got one. Yeah. And she was happy with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Did that shut her up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um. Yeah. And did, did she, she get did you she something? Get your gift back? She did get me something, yeah. See, I knew, we knew she would. she would. Yeah, but the thing is, right, she got me a little Game Boy Advance to take on holiday, because she knows I get bored. Lovely. Right? So that, that was good, but I, I was like, I, hang on a minute, I know how much I spent. Oh, f And I know how much these are, right? But I was clever though. When I got to the airport, I bought to get me an extra, sort of, get to bought me an extra game, game. for it. Yeah. Got the value. Of course. <laughs> are you, would, when you were growing up, did you wait to ask your mum for sweets right at the counter so the woman sort of, would sort of embarrass her into getting you it? Uh, what, you mean just slip it in the basket? Well, no, just go, just wait, wait till there's some, uh, you know, a stranger watching before you ask for sweets. Mum, can I have a Kinder Egg? Did you sit in front of Suzanne when it got to, Suzanne, can you get me something else? Because remember, I bought, spent more on that necklace than you did on like Game Boy Advance. And the woman in Dixon's goes, oh, you better get him something else. She goes, oh, bloody hell, all right then. <laughs> nah. She, she did well, though. 
<laughs> I mean, she's done well to keep you, hasn't she? Because well. you're such a find. You're quite a catch. Yeah, you're, you're, she must wake yeah. up every morning and go, Who? I am the luckiest girl in the world. Well, she told you that the other night. What? She said the other night how good it is living with me. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I what? said to Suzanne, it must be great, because I only see him two hours a week and I like to squeeze his little head. You can do that all day, every day. Does she ever squeeze your head? No. No? No. It's like that thing though, isn't it? It's like when you work in a chocolate factory. You get sick of it, don't you? If it's there all the time. <laughs> yeah, she must think, well, I could squeeze that head any time yeah. I want. It's not worth it. I just, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. What yeah. about your Christmas? My thing? dad, uh, does, I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad. Because, uh, he, um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this because he said you'll probably talk about this on the radio. And you're right, dad. I am talking about it. He bought my, my mum a, uh, little gold bracelet. Lovely, lovely gift. You know, it was a lovely thing. And I, she opened it. She loved it. And everyone thought, what a great gift. Lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> He wants something about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people. Look at that. Look at the gleam on that. <laughs> the gleam! See, see, look at the shine on that. Look at the gleam there. <laughs> look at the that. Gleam. And he, do you know what he said? He went, he said the great thing about that's pure gold. He went, it's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment, there. It's gold, oh, you know, it's always worth oh, gold. I love that when people get a gift and go, it's an investment. But, I love it. But what, not only does it sort of take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was I that know, he bought. I haven't, I haven't heard the word gleam for it's 30 gonna, years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that, look at the sparkle on that. And look at that, and it looks like rope. That's what he gets, and it looks like rope. <laughs> it looks like gold rope. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he just, and I know, I, I heard, he disappeared, we, we opened the gifts, he went disappeared, I could hear him in the kitchen going, think about that, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. <laughs> might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> next door neighbour, John, look at that, look at the shine on that. That's great, that's brilliant though. But it's just, it doesn't, it sort of undermine the gift a bit, if you keep on drilling well, no, on about it. Well, people, if people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it, and you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, loved she it. she couldn't get a word in next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. Oh. <laughs> what about yours? Uh, I didn't get my mum and dad anything this, this, this what? time. What? No, because I'm always treating them anyway. Whenever they, you know, if they need a few quid. Uh, yeah. if help well, you are the gift that keeps on giving, Carl. No, but don't just go giving anything just for the sake of it. You know what I mean? Wait for the t time that's right sort of thing, just because yeah. it's Christmas. Because... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there, there's no better time, is there, really? No, I just was gonna say my mum and dad didn't get me anything, but they did. What they get? But, uh, just some money. Mm. But, um, I'll, I'll get them something when the time's right, do you know what I mean? They always mm. need bits and pieces through the year, so. Yeah. I'll look after them. Sure. But, um, it was weird being away. Has anyone got a caught on to the fact that, you know, they leave groceries in the, in the telephone box near your dad yet? Oh, that's still going on. Is it? Going on, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't mm. it? That is just fantastic. So when he needs a loaf of bread, a pint of milk, just goes down. Does he ever, does he ever give that as gifts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now listen, are we doing, uh, the film thing in a bit? Oh. Got more prizes. Yeah. Is it better than Rockbusters? Uh, it's alright, I did it in a bit of a rush because I was only in yesterday, wasn't I? Sure. Well yeah, if, if you take like, like, three holidays a year, then so, there's not enough time for the work. Me and Steve like to, you know, put our priority into, you know, doing the work, coming up with a good product, yeah. and getting a holiday when we can. You know, we haven't, I haven't, I haven't well, really. I love a holiday, Rick. You know I love a holiday. But yeah. I don't do the holidays for me, it's for Suzanne, isn't it? She's the one who likes going away. <laughs> with so you? I'll just go, yeah. So I'll go with her, do me bit. When you were playing Game Boy, right, and you looked in the hole, and, uh, you were reading your book, what is, what is she doing? She'll sort of, She'll make things seem more interesting to me. Do you know what I mean? So like, when we're at the hole and the bus driver said, you've got an hour here, I thought, I said, why have I got an hour here? I go to a funeral with someone who I loved in the ground and don't spend an hour around it. <laughs> why do I wanna, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why do I wanna spend an hour looking in this? Wasn't that feel... terrible when, when you're like, you just shot up in all this magma? Yeah. That was terrible, wasn't it? That was the worst funeral you'd ever been to, wasn't it? But she'll, she'll I'll tell you that would make funerals more interesting. If they just, it, it was a cremation and a burial. Yeah. You just put them in a volcano they and they go, two, three, three, here they go, wee, up to heaven. I was having a conversation with my flatmate about songs that would be inappropriate to have at your wedding, at your funeral. And horny, just, surely, is one. It, yeah, was, was we it thinking, horny, yeah, really? Yeah, the first one we came up with. I'm horny, horny, uh, horny, uh, horny. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, that was God. the first one we came up with. Isn't Robbie Williams' Angels one of the, um, Yes. Biggest And ones. I think Wind Beneath Your Wind. Yeah. I think is apparently quite popular. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I play that art in auras. <laughs> yeah. <can't> you? <laughs> <laughs> Better Boston. 
Yeah. A bit of who? Busted? Buster, Buster. more than a feeling. Much more than a feeling. Boston, more than a feeling, XFM 104.9. Well, another big moment here. We've had Rockbusters. Now we're gonna have uh, Carl's film quiz thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a <laughs> film quiz thing. Um, I've done Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. Because one of the uh, things we did in Lanzarote went on this tour with uh, sort of three northern blokes, and they didn't really know what they were talking about. Joking. What You're you joking. <laughs> Northerners not knowing what they're talking about. You're having a laugh. No, they, they'd obviously sort of not had much luck here, right, and thought, let's go over to Lanzarote, buy some vans, right, get people in it, we'll do a tour of the island. Mm. And whenever someone asked a question like, what, when, what year did the volcano happen? They go, oh, we'll take you to the visitor centres, you can, you can read about it there. So they never actually answered anything, <laughs> right? So they were useless. But one of the things that they <laughs> told us was that Planet of the Apes was filmed in Lanzarote. Mm. Right, okay. Right. That makes sense. A bit of it. Well, does it? Does well, it make it, sense? Well, what do you right, mean, well, maybe does it? it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, <laughs> anyway. No! No, I mean, if they wanted to show sort of an hour and sort of barren, sort of post-apocalyptic sort of subject, choose where you went, aren't they? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, but when when we were there, well, he took us to this sort of beach, and I said, is this, is this where they did it? And he was like, yeah. I said, what, right, right there, yeah. And I watched it, and I couldn't see where I was. <laughs> yeah, you know that if you watch a film from 1968 and you've been no, in the same no, place, no, you're not going to feature, you're not, not going to see you in the back walking mm. along the beach. It's a new one, new, new Planet of the Apes. Oh, it's a right? recent Planet of the Apes. Yeah, 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 that's what they said, yeah. Right. Right, so I thought I'd sort of... Now that, that sounds a little bit more far-fetched. I would have thought that was probably a lot in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, well anyway, is this the current Planet of the Apes or the, the old one you've done? Current Planet of the Apes. This is the recent one. Alright, there'll be a question at the end of it, so... Listen to that. Mm. Is this entertaining to anyone, this? I mean, just, just take the last four minutes of conversation. But seriously, Rick, who cares? I don't. Do you? No. I don't. DVD's selling well. Exactly, what do I care? All right, come on then. All right, so, uh, Planet of the Apes, question at the end of it, listen and win some stuff, all right? <laughs> hey, where am I? What is this place? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. According to the Lanzarote Guide, We've been dropped off at the, uh, at the volcano bit. Apparently there's 36 volcanoes here to be seen. I hope you don't mind my saying, but this is a waste of time. What do you mean? I don't know why they need 36 volcanoes. Just keep one. Fill the rest in. The car park is like. Excuse me, guide. What's, uh, why's the, why's the bus drops us off here? What's, what's so special about this place? Well. According to our holy writings, that is where creation began. Where the Almighty breathed life in the time before time. Well, it's amazing that, isn't it? All this, all this has been studied for years and years. What about the coffee shop there? Is that, is that old, is it? Well. Well, nothing. You're out to rip us off. I rate it's about four quid for a coffee there. Always ripping people off. That's, that's what annoys me with these trips. You get us in the middle of nowhere, we die in a thirst. I'm not able to do without. The reason I've come here, I believe this is where they did uh, Planet of the Apes in it. Love monkeys. Especially the ones in Planet of the Apes, because they, they talk and that. How can monkeys can exist? Joking, aren't you? Of course they can. Hitting up to all sorts of stuff. I read about a monkey the other day who, who worked on the railway. Right? There was, uh, there was another one about a chimp that did a bank job and uh, went off to Spain to sort of. Shut up! What is that? <coughs> little monkey fella. <coughs> it's come from that little coffee shop. It's been serving coffee. Now that is worth paying four quid for. No, you're teasing him. I'm not teasing it. It's working, isn't it? It's serving the. T <coughs> we want some coffee. Get us some coffee. I've heard about this. You can buy. Uh, you can buy coffee that's been that's sort of hand picked by monkeys. It's like coffee, mate. Except it's it's more sort of coffee primate. Yeah. Hello, little fella. We want coffee. What do you mean, we? You're gonna have a coffee, aren't you? What else are you gonna do? Go and look at another 35 volcanoes. I'm staying here, I'm having a monkey coffee. It's brilliant. You find this amusing? Jesus, it's a talking monkey. All right, mate. Have a couple of coffees. Don't start now. We're off duty. I'm starving. 
Well, you're off duty. Have you bananas later? Just get us a couple of... I understand that you're tired and you've probably been on your hands all day. Just forget the coffee. You go and get some lunch. After you've got some couch, you lazy ass. You damn human! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Powerful. Uh, lovely. Excellent. So, uh, what's the question? Uh, if you've been listening to the whole show, <laughs> how many volcanoes do I think's on the island of Lanzarote? Okay. Yeah. Um, I might, I might be, I might have it wrong. What so. I've been saying, but it's roughly around that. Yeah. yeah so, uh, what have you been saying? Yeah. Yeah. All Brilliant. Right. Uh, Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, you're more likely to win the prize if you leave um, your address on the email. Yeah. Because otherwise, we can't really be bothered to phone people or email them back. So, Good point. Uh, put your address on there, and you could win some crap in a jiffy bag. Carl's theme tune there, by Placebo, Special Needs, on XFM 104.9. Right. New Year's resolution, Carl? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't do it, really. Don't it's more about something like, I don't know, start smoking. Do you know, there must be something. Uh, no, it's a waste of time, isn't it? I don't, don't, don't bother with that. Right. Any, uh, Me, no, I've never really made any New Year's resolutions. Just, I just be good to people. Just treat everyone as you want to be treated yourself. Mm. Give to charity. Um, hate, crime, racism, famine, sexism. I, I, I know you're gonna keep to all those, except the give to charity. That's, we, me and Carl find that a little bit hard to believe. Never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always got to break at least one of your news resolutions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I think I'll be nice to Carl. What about learn more? I was thinking that, I want to know more. teaching you stuff. I've, I've, I've got, I, I watched, uh, I'll tell you what, Christmas telly was dreadful this mm. year. I actually, I don't know if I've hit that age where I think about, I think consciously I thought this is worse than usual. Yeah. And I ended up watching that Discovery Channel and History Channel mm. again, and I watched four episodes in a row of, um, this fantastic documentary, 1418 War, um, narrated by Dame Judy, uh, Dame Judy Dench. And it's brilliant. I just can't get enough of it. I hated history at school, and now I want to know everything. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think that's mine. Learn, learn all the s stuff about yeah, stuff. I, I like learning though. I yeah. always say that to you. I'm always looking up stuff. When I was on holiday, even though it was sunny outside and they had big holes to look at if I wanted to, <laughs> I stayed in and watched Discovery there and was watching stuff about scorpions and that. Yeah. What, the, what, what did you learn? Well, nothing. Cause it was all in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched it. What, what I found ah, out, right? What I found out. Scorpions are very good. It's only about poison. You get away. What I don't understand is with scorpions, right? Um, they have like this, this sort of weapons, don't they? They have the poison and stuff, right? Yeah. Which can kill a man. Yeah. But there was a couple of little animals and that that were its sort of enemy. Yeah. And it stung them, and it didn't kill them. So what's the point? Well, firstly, not all scorpions kill them, and some of them, they're- This one things, did, you said. Yeah, well, they, they, they range from, like, bee stings to so much venom it can take down a horse on- on things like spiders and snakes and scorpions. So it depends. But a scorpion that will kill a man would kill a rabbit. So I don't know what you're talking about. No, there was a snake that it stuck its thing into, and some sort of beaver, and they were just, like, <laughs> running about. There's nothing funny about that, so why are we laughing? <laughs> well, the snake wasn't running about, was it? Well, it was, it was slithering about a bit. Yeah. What was the beaver doing when just, the snake- just, It just sort of, I think it ate it in the end. What? At what? At the scorpion. It just wandered off. <laughs> well, so it wasn't a beaver! There you go, There's you've no that. way it was a beaver! Alright, an otter. It was <laughs> <laughs> this is what you pieced together from a show in Spanish. <laughs> Oh. I'm just saying though, how come it can't kill something that small, yet there's someone on holiday that's no sort of danger to that scorpion. We're not gonna harm it. Right? And yet it can kill a man. <laughs> so you say, up, but Carl. I don't believe it. Shut up, mate. Seriously, this is gobbledygook. Taught you something again, though. That's what I'm no, saying. No, what have I'm you always... taught us, though? What is, what is that, what is the fact that's come out of that? A scorpion can kill a man, but the beaver was dancing with a snake, then it well, that, You do that that's all the time, That's not a fact. That's not a fact. Down. New Year's Eve taught him something, right, about, uh, dead people. No. Do you know what, this it taught me. I was saying, you're talking shite. He says they found out your soul weighs an ounce. <laughs> your soul? Yeah. 
You're so always an ounce. Right, who phoned this out? I read it. You are so always an ounce. Yeah. There's no such thing as so always an ounce. You're talking drivel. Right. <laughs> Have you got any monkey news? Um, so what do they do? They 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 measure they they weighed someone who was alive and they were waiting for you to die. Then weigh you again. There was oh, someone. There was someone. Now you've lost an ounce. Yeah, oh, so it must be a soul shooting off to heaven. It was someone who was really ill and yeah. said we can't do anything for you here, but we've got a bit of a idea that we want to do. <laughs> Stuck him on some scales. He said, "Right, you weigh nine pounds and an ounce, or whatever," because yeah. he was wasting away. He died, nine pounds. <laughs> right? Fine. Well, that's proof if proof we needed. Talking uh, shite. Monkey news. We might as well leave it. Now, come on, no, come on, on, tell monkey news. No, it's, it, it's nothing uh, that great, really. Is it worth playing the jingle? Quickly. Go on then. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. Right, it's about a monkey. Four, 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 four. four, four, four. About this this woman monkey who was born in 1834, <laughs> right? Half monkey, half woman. No, not true. It happened apparently. It Impossible. Was in the, it was in the Daily Mail, right? <laughs> okay. The Victorian ape woman was her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, I christened uh, this uh, thing a Victorian ape woman. Well, we thought Sandra. No, I'm calling it Victorian ape woman. She was about four foot. No, it didn't happen. She had lovely thick black hair on her head and on the back of her legs. <laughs> and her arms. Yeah, yeah. All right. Save stockings. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and she, she was... didn't need a bustle because of her huge ape-like ass sticking <laughs> out the back of her dress. She was good at reading and sewing. Um, she well, they, well, it was good because they didn't have opposable thumbs. So, uh, uh, she could speak three languages. Yes. She, uh, was human, monkey, and monkey human. Twenty offers of marriage. Does that annoy you, Steve? <laughs> um, ah, absolute twaddle. All right, well, that more rubbish than your soul weighing an ounce. Let's leave A it Victorian there, monkey let's woman. Leave it there, then. See you next week with some more twaddle. I was worried we wouldn't have the old magic in 2004, oh, but we're still talking shit. <laughs> Merry New Year. <laughs> Snow Patrol and Run on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Bill because yeah. that's three for one. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Exciting. Exciting. Um, oh, news, okay. news, news, news. Uh, breaking news is that there's only two more weeks of us before we have to go away on a little extended break again. So um, can't give any more details yet. We don't know when we can come back because uh, we don't know what we're doing. We're going to. Um, America, we're doing the Golden Globes, and then we're going to watch the Office Pilot being filmed. Yes, and then we've got bits. Of, I'm doing a bit of a tour, so it'll be sort of the summer times, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it like they they care. Oh, they don't give a damn. Do you know what I mean? Don't I sometimes think that because um, you think, oh, you don't want to let down the people. You want to be, keep it consistent. You want to give, you know, but really, I know I like doing this more than anyone listening. Definitely. Do you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, definitely. I love coming in, I love squeezing Carl's head. Yeah. I love playing some records. You know, I like sort of sitting in the room with you. I know you love it. Oh. <laughs> hey, can't wait. I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, we got a Saturday's back though. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, my alarm went off today and I was a bit tired because we, we had a couple of drinks last night, didn't we? Last night, yeah. We had, we had, you know, party, we had party animals. Yeah. Um, but, um, oh, I've been looking for an office this week, mm. as you know. And it's so stressful. <sighs> Just walking around, just talking to t agents and but, but uh, right, okay. So my method is this, right? I walk around the area that I want to be in, in cause I, I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So I walk around. It, uh, uh, to be fair, it is about a square five hundred yards. Yeah, right. It's sort Your of house is in the centre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I walk, yeah. And uh, so I walk around and look at placards. I go, that's a nice office, and I phone them up. There's loads of different people I'm dealing with, right? And they went, oh, we got one in so-and-so street, I think it was Fifth Street or something like that. I went, oh yeah, I went on to, so I'll see you there in 20 minutes. I got there, you were there if you remember. I looked around and I said to Steve, it looks alright, there's no, 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 no pawn shops or anything like that, right? And Steve went, well, it is next to a brothel. And I looked and there on the next thing, like, you know, model, first floor, uh, Susie, oh three, I went, oh, and I phoned him and I said, do you know what, um, don't bother coming here. He went, no, I said, no, no, I said, because it's next to a brothel. He went, yeah. I went, right, okay, just for future reference, I don't want an office literally next to a brothel, <laughs> right? 
When I go to work, I don't want to walk past prostitutes. Call me old-fashioned. Yeah, right? as you go into work, there's a prostitute. Yeah. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Oh, has she got a cappuccino? Yeah, Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> uh, business good? Yeah, it's a bit slow at the moment. It well, picks up later this evening, does it? Really good. <laughs> and, uh, I said, I, I said to him, I've got so... So my, my news resolution is being like a little fascist when it comes to business. And, and I said, uh, uh, also future reference, um, um, no, no crack dens and no wild animals in the porch. <laughs> and, uh, I, I just can't believe it. There's always something wrong. We went to one, right? It got there, right? And, uh, a woman said, oh, I'm new here. She didn't, she didn't have, she didn't know what keys she was using. And she went, it's the third floor. And she went, and there's no point. We won't both get in the lift. I went, right. Will you get a desk in the lift? <laughs> Right, she went, I've got a chair in the lift before. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. just find me an office, Rathbone Place, sort of Percy Street, Charlotte Street, Dean Street. Yeah. Yeah. First or second I'm floor. I'm worried we're gonna get emails from estate agents, phone calls from them. You know what those people are like. But I don't look at the emails. <laughs> Fair enough. So, play Fair records. Enough. Dixon's <laughs> Dixon's 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 Dix
You bought your first flat in Manchester, you assumed you would be living there for the rest of your life. Well, I wasn't in a rush. Cut your record, you're an idiot. Hang on a minute, I, so have you got a property portfolio? Have you got the two houses, Nick? No, oh, I've got rid of that one. Oh, you sold that one? Got this flat. a £7,000 loss. Got this flat. I'll tell you something that is interesting. Hold on, though. What? Um, seven thousand pound lost. Yeah. It's it flat in Manchester, but it could only cost about eight grand anyway. <laughs> right, Steve. Something you, they, they do now, right? They've got to do by law when you're buying, right? I was looking at one in London, right? Um, it's haunted. They've got to tell you now. Right. Don't talk shit. I'm Thank telling you now. Record. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as ghosts. That if that that is ridiculous if that appears on a, a legal document. That right. If there's ridiculous. anyone who sells flats and that does that for a living, yeah. Right. Email in because yeah. I'm telling you now that that is a fact. She sort of dropped it in. She sort of said, "Oh, you know, nice, nice feel here," and she said, "Yeah, well, that will be the uh, the ghost." Just dropped it in. That's all they've got to do. And then I was like, "What?" And they went, "Oh, yeah." That's, that's what I've got to do, is it? So that's the legal thing. <laughs> so you drop it. In. So in court, you go, "Did you drop it in?" Yeah, I dropped it in. Play a record. You're an idiot. <laughs> January. <laughs> uh, what you got? Good. What you got for us? I just Steve? thought we ought to maybe go through some of the emails. I mean, I don't want to query the caliber of some of the emails we get sent on this show, but um, here's a typical one, Rick. Go on. Um, there's no name. It's just from Glicko. That's his email address. That's uh, just a question to you, Rick. Did I see you walking around Marlebone High Street last Sunday? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I was in Marlborough High Street last Sunday, yeah. Yeah, but uh, did you see Glicko? I didn't see Glicks. Okay. I didn't see the Glickster. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... Alright, this is one from M. Ricky, what do you think of Richard Bacon's show? I can't decide if he's better than you. Uh, nor can I. Any thoughts? Nor can I. I can't help her out on that one. That sure. really, that's a really personal thing. She's got to dig deep. She's got to look at both of us. She's got to find out what she likes. Yeah. And then whether I provide more of that than <laughs> Baker's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Baker Foyle's brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to put myself up against him, so uh, I can't help you. Next, Steve, next. Well, there was, what, there was a lot of emails <coughs> last week uh, which were saying how much they enjoyed the Christmas specials. Thank you very much for that. That's very flattering of you. There was also a couple. <laughs> There was one that it was a guy, I'm sorry that I've, I think I might have deleted it, but oh, I should have sent a, a reply because there was a guy from Canada saying, if there any chance you're around in March, whether you could pop in and have a surprise birthday dinner for his wife. Oh, God, why don't you keep that? <laughs> I know, well, I can't, that. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, you idiot. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, um, I really apologise for that. Yeah. Um, there's also, this is interesting, this is more for Carl, really. Um, it sounds unlikely. Is it Carl's from a doctor saying you're an idiot? Oh, uh, we've got plenty of those, I tend to delete them. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at um, his face! No, it just says, uh, you know, don't like to complain, but I won the film competition about five or six weeks ago, and Ooh. I haven't received my prizes. Oh dear, that's all the Carl, that's all Carl has to do on the show. Thinking. We provide the chat, the records, the light entertainment. I mean, the you know, Strokes a comedy genius. Um, all Carl has to do is send out the prizes and say, there was a monkey that was a bank robber <laughs> at five to three. <laughs> yeah. What's Carl? Yes, Carl. Um, do you remember her winning? I've got all, I've got all- Well, you're calling her a liar. Well, I am, because I don't remember ever seeing- Right, that, that he's calling her a liar. So, Joanne Ogden, you're claiming, he's just making this up. She sent this in on a whim, trying to fool us and get some cheap tat. Wow. I don't believe that. I don't believe anyone would lie to try and get knowing me, knowing you on VHS. I really don't. Well, I'll, I'll look in the records because we keep all the details, so, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> well, one of you's in the wrong, and do you know what? Knowing you, Carl, I don't think it's Joanne. No. Has, has anyone else ever emailed in saying they haven't got the, uh, like a trap? No, they haven't. Mm. They haven't. Well, well, yeah, so one, one mistake's one too far, because that's one person, so, you know, you, it, it, you might send out 30, but that one person, that's the first time they've won a competition, they, they, they want the, the history of wind, <laughs> narrated <laughs> by Donald McIntyre, on VHS, yeah. and, you know. Stephen King's It, <laughs> on, on Betamax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, to mind that they, they, they sometimes they want the best of primal scream on a cassette. <laughs> <Is that absolutely? laughs> so you know. you've got to make sure you're sending these primal. <laughs> yeah. Final uh, email from Andy. He says um, the webcam uh, is pointing at the ceiling. Is it because the air conditioning vent is more exciting than what happens on the show? Let's put that down oh, now. That's absolutely right. Now, hold on a minute. Now, just uh, if someone is that good. People love the webcam. I don't know what they're interested in because all they get is a picture of Carl's big head. It's not a big. It's just round. 
Got it right. Um, Carl, I'd like you to play the next tune. Um, I got sent a little cheeky, um, primer for the cures during the dots, just B-sides and rarities, lots yeah. of stuff from them, from all over the ages. And it's amazing how good their B-sides are, here's one of them playing. Yeah. <laughs> And that's called A Man Inside My Mouth, which was the B-side to Close To Me. There's nothing amusing about that, Rex. I don't know why you're laughing. Well, it's called A Man Inside My Mouth. Yeah, I know. And that's fine. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, the little man inside your head. Yeah. You know, man if a man mouth. wants to be inside anyone's mouth, that's good, you know, good after <laughs> 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 them. Is that wrong with that? But so, I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, do you agree with that? What man in your head? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's extraordinary. Let's understand schoolboy carry on innuendo. I, I know the fact that the play on words is too farthing. What does it mean on site? The erection. <laughs> what? Um, what do you mean dumplings? Huh? You're a fan of The Simpsons. You yeah. know that character in The Simpsons, the um, gap tooth yokel? Yeah. If I look at Carl when he's just like, Cletus. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 it's the kind of <laughs> cliche comic book thing of having a mouth wide open <laughs> to suggest formlessness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's amazing. Or an accommodating come on. Yes. Absolutely. Carl. Oh. That little man inside your head is what, you know, that people use it as your conscience, don't they? Alright. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. No? No. No? no. Okay. I was, uh, I was <laughs> watching Moonraker. Uh, it was on, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the James Bond films. I have never, I don't think I've ever watched a Bond film from beginning to end. Yeah. I've never watched one on DVD, and I've never gone to the cinema to watch one, and I, I'm not usually in on Easter Saturday. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> well, the thing about you is, when I was younger, I, I thought he was amazing. I just thought he was the ultimate, cool, sophisticated hero. Do you know what I mean? My dream as a kid, like when I say kid, I mean a teenager, was to come home, which invariably he did. He'd come back to his hotel suite, he'd open the door, there'd be a trail of clothes, and he'd follow yeah. it, he'd go into the bedroom, and there'd be a beautiful woman in the bed, you know. You'd have said, clean up, <laughs> what are you doing? You're messy. <laughs> I'm gonna get my mum to clean all this <laughs> up like, now. Well, she's got a bad, bad <laughs> nudie lady in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and as I say, I used to think he was really cool and sophisticated. And it's only of late that I've sort of watched, you've revisited these films. And it's, I'll tell you what, it's his jokes. Oh. He is the oh, most infuriating man yeah, ever. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know why people in the films consider him so. I mean, I, I think the reason that women in the films are always being seduced by him is because, if you notice, they're normally they normally got English as a second language. Right. So they don't understand. They don't so when he's making those jokes, so they don't know when he goes. Uh, uh, just keeping the British end up. Yeah, I'm just attempting re-entry. Yeah. If that was a British woman, she'd be going, what? Yeah, what are you talking don't about? say you that. That sounds bastard. awful and it's a terrible it's poem. It's so rude. Like what am I? Yeah, what am I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they just laugh. They just laugh pettishly and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, unzip their dress normally. Yeah. <laughs> but some yeah. of the guys, there was one where he's, uh, He's just being chased by a guy in a moped or something, and the guy plummets off a cliff and smashes through a van which is full of feathers, and he plummets to his death, and Bond just says, all those feathers, and he still couldn't fly. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's not a joke! It's just words! Uh, there's one where he, in Moonrake, he punches this guy, he's having a fight, he punches him through a plate glass window, and he lands on a piano, and Bond goes, play it again, Sam. <laughs> The one, uh, I always remember there's the one in one uh, of the early films where he, he kill he, he throws a guy in the bath and electrocutes him by throwing in a um oh, uh, a thing and then he goes sh absolutely sh shocking. shocking. But yeah. I'm just thinking you just killed a man. I know you're well, a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's, just, it's just so excruciating. <laughs> if someone was doing those kind of jokes in the office, yeah. you would hate them. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't yeah. want to talk to them. They'd be a bore. I know. Yeah. Everything. Everything's a little one liner. I know. And everything's a pun. Yeah. But I tell you what, there is a bloody good secret agency. <laughs> True. So, you know, they're, they're not hired for their, um, you know, wit and, uh, you know, stand-up ability. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, it swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I yeah. doubt Johnny Vegas could, uh, save the world. That's true enough, yeah. So, uh, think on. Different people, different needs. <laughs> California waiting on XFM 104.9. Do you know what, Steve? We get emails and, uh, you know, we got our posters up around this show and, uh, people enjoy it. But I don't think we get the credit we deserve 
for picking the music. It's true. Because we're totally unplaylisted and I don't know if people know about this, that m mine and Steve's sort of first passion before comedy is probably music. We're really, really, we love playing each other sort of records and that. And maybe when we come back, we should do a show where there is no pressure to, you know, like, Carl doesn't press the buttons for us, pre-record it, where we just we swap each other's sort of ideas for music. It'd be like uh, the Ricky Gervais compilation tape. Well, sort of like we're not, we're not talking John Peel, where we try and find obscure Belgian jungle mm. and do demos. You know, everything from you know Kings of Leon, Lou Reed. You know, maybe a bit of eighty stuff that people yeah, have forgotten yeah, yeah. about. Beautiful something. songs, beautiful songs. So what do you think? I'd love to do that, Rick. I mean, I genuinely, I, there's nothing more exciting to me than introducing to someone a song which they then. That and they, they love, love and they, listen, they, they buy the album, da, 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 da. But that's something to think about, maybe, for later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you say, the, the pressure to kind of come up with some, you know, um, high caliber chat yeah. between each record, it is, it takes the toll. But, um, you know? yeah, and that, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's a passion of ours and we love to, but, 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 but now, it's Rockbusters. Can I just say something now, before we do Rockbusters, a lot of people sort of, they come up to me, they say, Steve, we like the show, when are you gonna get rid of Rockbusters? It's, it brings it down. I, I'm not joking. Time. I'm not joking, there is loads of people. Like, come on, let, let come, off it, come off it. Come what? off it. What? I know people who say, you're never gonna stop that, are you? Yeah. So, one of us is lying again. <laughs> Well, not really. You know, I, I, I'm talking I love about. His face. I'm talking about people who've listened to the show. You're talking about Suzanne, <laughs> your uh, girlfriend. Oh, uh, Martin. He, he'll be at home now with a pad, getting ready <laughs> to play. But I should just. Max <laughs> Freeman did, did say, did encourage Carl on a couple of occasions. He even tried to get him through with the answer egg when we were doing that naming animal round. Yes. So, but I should just say that people, they, people think that somehow Ricky and I are endorsing Rockbusters, that somehow by allowing it on the show, somehow we think it's good or we appreciate it, and I need to point out that it's more like when a child comes back from school and they've done a painting. Yeah. It's crap. Yeah. But of course you've got to stick on the fridge. bigger than the house. <laughs> you've got to stick it yeah. on the fridge because otherwise the kid's going to exactly. get upset. In this next episode, you've got to remember the cat is bigger than the house. <laughs> exactly. It's, okay. It doesn't look like anything. The humans don't have bodies, their legs come straight from their heads. Yeah. Mummy and daddy. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Carl Pilkington's Rockbusters. Right. <laughs> right, so, uh, cryptic clues, no, initials, cryptic. and you work not it out, clear. you email in and that. Yeah. First one. Yeah. Uh, don't be stealing my tools, take your sisters. <laughs> All right, and the initials N K. Don't be so, stealing my tools, take my sisters. Yeah, so that's like the cryptic clue, and the initials of the artist or band is N K. Mm. Right. Second one. Buy it if you want, not bother, think about it. Come back. <laughs> right, come back if you want. <laughs> start again, Carl! I don't know I do! Right, start that second one again! Right, well, you can back- <laughs> It's different, it's different! Well, the first one was, uh, buy it if you want, now this one was, uh, yeah, well, write it down, buy it. Right, right, do it, do it. If it's a cryptic clue, all the letters count, do it. Buy it if you want, I'm not that bothered, you know. Think about it, come back, check some other places out first before you, you know. <laughs> So we've got no we've got no time for other clues. Oh, right. So that's S C. That's, right, that, do that clue again. Buy it if you want. I'm not I'm not, I'm not fussed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about fast. it. Fast! Fast is making the appearance! Fast wasn't there before! Do the clue again! Do the clue again! <laughs> Initials SC for that one. Do the clue again! I don't, don't want to do it again. Do you haven't finished it yet? I have, that's it. No, do the clue again. <laughs> I do the clue again. Well, I'll bite if you want, I'm not fussed, right? Chop around, <laughs> come back. It's up to you. I know I'm not pushing you into anything. It's right? up to you, it wasn't there. S, S, C. S, C oh, for that one, dear. right? And the final one, uh, <laughs> that's good, I can play 10 pin bowling again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, and what's oh, the clue? Well, that's, that's O for that one. O. o. Alright, so, uh, well, okay, okay, now I assume that, I'm not gonna bother to look, but I assume there's a, there's a <laughs> jiffy bag of tap yeah. which people can win. <laughs> Alright, well great, good luck. Uh, um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk is the email address. Play Thorns? Yeah, no, there's, there's play if you want, I'm not pushing, come back, have a look round. I'm, I'm, I'm open Wednesdays, by the way, shit, I'll see you later. The Thorns and No Blue Sky, um, off their album, uh, of last year, which is probably my favourite album of, of the year. I've started getting into that sort of like music, more serious thing, yeah. in case we do it. I mean, well, I don't know, from, from that comment, maybe we should do some preparation. Pre Pre-record it. Yeah. So we can sort of like, cut all the ums and ahs and, like me, and me sort of like eating a sandwich yeah. while it's on, yeah. singing along, tapping a little bit. Yeah. yeah. 
I won't lay down like this either. We'll get me a chair that I can sort of be upright so I can enunciate. You were in the Rui when um, Carl was singing along to Oliver's Army. No. It was a joy. Checkpoint Charlie. Oliver's Army. No idea. Oh, bless him. Rockbuster's well on the way. Any, uh, any right answers yet, Carl? Just check. Let's see, we got, uh, one email. One email? Uh, no. No, because they probably don't make sense. Yeah, no, no, no responses whatsoever. It's still on the tax and that. Really? 83 extra fam if you want to do it on the old, uh, tax. Speak up, Carl. You can do it on the radio. No, we're on the radio, we're live. Just letting you know, do it on the tax if you want. Send it in on the tax. And what? <laughs> well, what is it? Say it! 83 extra fam. Right. Right. What's the email address again? ricky.gervais.xfm.co.uk Are you tired today, Carl? Are you just bored or...? No, no, I'm alright, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve? Yeah, well, no, I just, I, <laughs> I just wanted to mention to you, I went to, um, a pub near my house recently. I found out that there was a, a, a pool hall. Oh, yeah. Like a pool club there, and I love pool, I love, I, you know, I like to think myself as looking a little bit like Paul Newman in The Hustler. Yeah. When I'm shooting pool. Yeah. And, yeah. um... I went down there, and I went with my flatmate, and, uh, it's quite a seedy pub in many respects. There's a lot of weird people in there, like, alcoholics, and- Why did they go there? It's strange, isn't it? Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. And, um, very, very odd people. And, um, so he's a little bit nervous, and he says, I'm a bit worried, because there's a lot of, kind of, you know, there's people from the estate, the nearby sure. council estate, you know. Yeah, yeah. For want of a better word, scum. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, so he's a bit edgy, and, uh, bizarrely, I, because I still wanted to play pool, I said to him, um, he went, I'm a bit scared about going in. I went, don't worry, you're with me. Yeah. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what that means. They're yeah. gonna think, oh wait a minute, the six foot guy with the, the lanky guy with the glasses, yeah. they're not gonna mess with him. They, they, you go there, they take your glasses off and you go, I've lost. <laughs> exactly. That's this it, is, I'm out of here. This is why I've never got into a fight, cause if you, if my glasses are gone, I'm you, screwed. That's the first thing Are you really, you're really glass short sighted, aren't you? I'd be absolutely done for. And are you nervous without, are you sort of like nervous yes. without them? You know what, whenever you- you know whenever you see like a, a kind of action film or whatever, or maybe like a horror film? The nerd where loses, the nerd glasses, loses glasses and he's scrabbling around on the floor is that you, is it? they're coming behind him. That's me. Really? Yeah, done for. Absolutely done for. What, uh, what did you do when you were at school and you had to play tennis or football or rugby or something? Um, kept them on. That's dangerous. Well, of course it? it is. That's why I was never, you know, as good at rugby as I probably could have been. <laughs> you know, because of course you can. Can you play rugby with glasses on? I'm in the scrub going, careful! <laughs> Your boots. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Never mind me, nads. Exactly. <laughs> Watch the glasses. <laughs> but uh, so I went in that because I used to um, I used to do uh, judo when I was very young. Well, that's the impossible. But this is ludicrous. That must go falling off. Oh, of course. What about gaffer tape? Just got like just, round. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Well, I, so. did, I bought something like a kind of a sports strap to keep them on, and they just it just pushed them right into my eyes. I could barely see. Uh -huh. I was blinded. <laughs> <laughs> but I swear, when I used to go to judo, I'm sure. That the other kids were being taught, right? Just knock Steve's glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> knock his glasses off. You can get him. <laughs> oh, and um, and uh, so I, I'm always a bit edgy about fights, but for some reason I felt super confident going in there. I was like, I swaggered in and uh, into the pool hall. And it's one of those places you've got to sort of knock. It's like a speakeasy. You've got to knock, yeah. and they open the door, and you come in. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm in there, and. Uh, my flat, <laughs> yeah, one of those things you slide, uh, like a little level, because you exactly. slide over. You knock, knock, you, knock, you, knock, you, knock, you put your face there, you just knock your glasses <laughs> off. <Exactly. laughs> and, uh, so I went in there, and, um, in a way, my flatmate was justified in being a little bit edgy, because, um, the conversation we could overhear, uh, the table next to us, we were playing pool, the guy next to us was going, um, yeah, of course, the bloody police spent Boxing Day in the Nick. Absolute nightmare. <laughs> you getting nervous. So I was getting a little bit edgy because I didn't know, but I, then I thought, you know, they don't mess with their own. We're yeah. like, we're almost like gangsters ourselves because we're there in the lion's yeah. den. Do you know what I mean? We'll probably be fine. So then, um, there's just an old guy serving at the bar, you know, in his fifties, and some guys go over to the jukebox. Some young kids, they're just hanging out in the pool hall. They're pretty cool. They put some money in the jukebox, and in first track, Coldplay. Fine, I'm thinking that's nice. I'm playing pool. Second track, hardcore German techno, <laughs> and they and they put in about. Fifty quid's worth, it seemed, because it just went on. Oh, oh God. really thumping, kind of like gabber stuff. Do, 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 do. Old guy at the bar just <laughs> nodding his head, cleaning the glass. Yeah. So into this piano come, player, furious. Exactly. <laughs> into this comes like what appeared to be a family of holiday makers with kids. So they've entered this like seedy pool hall. Um, we've got, you know, the Cray Twins playing pool next to me. They come in, the German techno's blaring. They come in, and there's like kids, you know, and they've got the baby in one of those little pouches, and they oh, come yeah. in, blah, blah, blah. they sit down, and um, 
The weirdest thing was one of the kid, one of the guys, the uncle, let's say, of the of the family. He picked up the kid and he put. He was about to put the baby down in a chair, and I thought, hang on, that's quite 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 a hard backed chair. And as he did it, the baby's head just went and hit the back of the chair, <laughs> and I uh, just flipped back and hit the back of the chair because he just lumped it down. Oh in the God! Head. And it started screaming, it crying, you know. And the um, teenagers to rock into that. They loved it. And um, and he came over and. and it was transparent what happened, and the mum was going, what's happened? The baby's crying. And he went, I don't know what happened. <laughs> and I wanted to lean over and go, you lying swine! You, you know what happened? You just hear yourself. I wanted to go, just take her aside and say, never let him handle your baby again. No, the head was wobbling the around. Was wobbling around. Just head, I could see it come in. I don't know, yeah. who knows, he might turn out like Carl now. I, I, that's a point. But what oh. do you do in those situations? You know, do you... Do you well, the, I, I'm assuming by the way you're taking it lightly, the baby wasn't hurt in any way, the just baby made his- Well then- But he was still a bit- well, You keep out of it, don't you? I what are you gonna so. do? Call the authorities and go, it was him? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to name the place in case I get knifed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I imagine you trying to swagger it when you overheard him drop the neck. I imagine you know me, going, yeah, pigs. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, I ate the pigs as well. No, I'm a lawyer. I was down there going, <laughs> exactly. oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Oh dear. But, so, uh, I'll be going back though. So I feel like I'm that's going it. I mean, I've told you before, Steve, stay away from working class people and bad men in trainers. Because, you know, you hang on with nerdy wells and you're going to get your glasses knocked off. <laughs> that's true. Jet. Roll over DJ on XFM 104.9. Carl, now, Carl, you promised me. That you were gonna reintroduce educating Ricky. Yeah, I'll just yeah, we can do that. Have you got it? Have you have you got something that will um that's something that I won't know that's correct and that will interest me? Um, yeah, there's loads of stuff. Is it anything with monkeys? No, we've got we've got monkey news. We've got monkey news coming up. Of course, we've got monkey news. People, and then now now over to uh, XFM for monkey news with Carl Pilkington. No, we won't do that yet. We're not doing that yet. Educating Ricky. Yeah. Well, let's uh, do it. We did it ages ago. Educating Ricky. Oh, that's interesting, and it's correct. Hang on a minute, though. What I do is I tease you, don't I, with headlines? Oh, go on then. And then you have yeah. to sort of go. That one sounds good. Go on then. What? what I want to know more about that. Educate me. Yeah. Right. Okay. You've got. Uh, well. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. That that Nelly died. <laughs> <laughs> that Nelly died. Oh, like, okay. Okay. Right. Could be about an elephant. Yeah. Go on. You've got that. You've got. Uh, well, uh... I've got well. Take well for as red. So they all start with well, okay? <laughs> Knob body has been that lucky before. <laughs> Brilliant, all right. Okay. Uh, oh, you've got, get a lobe of this court case. Right, okay. Not, uh, I'm going for knob body has been that lucky before. Right, it's a story about this kid who was born, right? Uh, was he? Yeah, he's, he's bopped out like, and the dad and the mum saw the baby, and it was like, oh, that's a good looking little kid. Sure. And they were proud of that. And then, uh, I don't know, they're surprised that it's a good looking little kid, it's yeah, theirs. Yeah. Like, it could have been a, uh, it could have been a frog, and they'd have gone, oh, he's got your eyes. And then, uh, the doctor goes, yeah, it is, but, uh, look at that. What? He said, it's a boy, and, uh, hasn't got a knob. I love the doctor saying that. <laughs> I love this GP. Right. Oh, this midwife saying that. Oh, the little boy, yeah, yeah, but no knob, baby. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. I, 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 I mean, think. Right. No, but I'm speeding it up a bit. All right, come on. So the baby's right, so born. The baby's like that, and, and, the says that, and the woman's like, oh, it's our first as well and stuff. Right? She's really got it. What's it. the second gonna be like? So, uh, Your head. So, <laughs> just a knob. Doctor <laughs> says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you call it Carl. <laughs> Right, go on. Right, so, go on. Um, so the doctor says, well, I'll leave it with you for a bit, get used to the idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to throwing it away. So he wanders off. Yeah. He comes back with a smile on his face. Found right? the knob. So the mum and dad are like, what's, what, you know, what are you smiling about? He says, you're not going to believe this. Baby's just been born. It's got two. <laughs> right? You can have one of them. And they did a little, uh, <laughs> little operation. Where did you get this information from? That's in a book. <laughs> What book? Is, is it the same as the book that you carry round with you? No. With the woman with three legs, the, the juggler with nine arms, and the bloke who found shagging a chicken under a rock. <laughs> is it in that book? Well, weird though, isn't it? Well, it's not true. It is true. 
What, in the same hospital? There was a baby born with that no. and I'm luckily there, no. there. It's Carl. <laughs> Happened. But you're not, but you swear to God, you're not making. The doctor came back smiling because he won't believe it. There's, uh, yeah. there's a baby there with an excess of a knob. It happened. Honestly, I'm not. All these things are not made up. The the educating stuff. That's that's why I do it. Isn't it teaching you stuff. Always teaching you stuff. Right, <laughs> all right. If anyone can confirm the baby oh, with well, no knob, they're going to the confirm it because they're going to go to the same dubious website that Carl got it from. I always try to be level-headed and reasonable in these situations. And it's you always, always, it's always it. Guatemala or Mexico. About uh, uh, Rodriguez there, there was born without a knob. Luckily, baby next door, and and, and, and uh, I was without two knobs. <laughs> what a load of shite! Play record. You. There's still more to come. Oh, I'm looking forward nice. to. Was it Nelly? Nelly dead. Nelly, it, it, Nelly, it, Nelly died. Nelly died. <laughs> Radiohead off the Benz album. Mm -hmm. I mean, might be my favourite album of all time. You said it before, yeah. I yeah. can't say I've ever really got into it. I remember when it came out, it was just so ubiquitous everywhere. I never really bothered listening. I to can it. still listen to it every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be sad. I don't know, it but it's a fantastic album. Yeah. Mm. On XFM 104.9, just practicing for when we uh, talk about music. talk more about music than maybe monkeys and people born without knobs, <laughs> baby. Uh, Carl, any other thoughts? Uh. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you any more educating stuff yet. You're going to tease me with that, are you? Leave you with, uh, it Nelly died. Yeah. And get a load of this court case, right? But I want you <laughs> thinking about. Yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, just getting my red juices ready. About that. Yeah, like an aperitif. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But um, I just educated you. Yeah. Right. And I watched the Office Christmas stuff on uh, last Sunday. Did you, like, you enjoy it? I think it was good. Good. I think it was good. Thank it was you very much. Uh, one of my favourites. The yeah. second one. Second one was good. Yeah. Okay. Your second one. Um, was more, more the paybacks in the second one. The first one's more set up. Yeah. So you know, I'd have thought people would like the second one more. Yeah. So that's nice. That's a nice critique. Thank you, Carl. Um, but there was something in it you did about cavemen. Cavemen. You said something about um, it was a fact about cavemen, and you sort of only half did it. You didn't give the full information, like what? Like I doing that? You just, you, you just. Where was it? What bit was it? Um, it was. It was the bit when you were talking about getting a woman, I think, or you were talking about breasts or- Oh, oh! The one when I said people are- the reason women have cleavage is it reminds men of buttocks because when we were cavemen we used to do you from behind. Yeah. Yeah. At, at the date, blind date, yeah. Is that a joke or- Well, I was hoping it was funny. We were- Oh, you mean- um, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did- I think cleavage is meant met to represent, in a sort of Desmond Morris pop sort of anthropology type way, I think I, I've seen that before, that um, cleavage represents um, buttocks. And I imagine, you know, cavemen probably did do it from behind. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want to know, Carl, really. It was, it's in a sitcom, it, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> it looked like one. Yeah, 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 it yeah. Brilliantly directed to look like one, I'll give you that. Mm. No, but what you're saying to blokes like... Yeah, cause I think cleavage is represented like uh, buttocks because obviously buttocks were much more of a sexual organ, evolutionally speaking, breasts were to actually bring up, uh, um, to suckle young, but, uh, and, and were a sign of sexual maturity so you're ready to mate, but whereas... Uh, Carl, I'm not an anthropologist, mate, I'm struggling here, what do you need no, to know? But, but yeah, I imagine, I imagine, I imagine... The, the cleavage reminds you of an arse, I'd... Right, well, if if it's all about arse, why don't gays like a little bit of tip? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> oh, you've done me! <laughs> ah. So the question put to us today on XFM 104.9, please call me that, does, is if it's all about arse, <laughs> then why, why don't gays you? like a little bit of tip? I was worried uh, if it's all about ask why don't gays like tit. If it's all about ask why don't gays like tit, <laughs> just call <laughs> in with your. Thanks it's, very uh, much for tuning in. This has uh, been Children's TV. If it's all about ask why don't gays like tit. It's uh, it's <laughs> been an hour and a quarter before we got round to gays, so it's too late for the parents. If it's all about ask why don't gays like a bit of tit? <laughs> is the question? What a brilliant question. Well, 
If, if you're an anthropologist or a, 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 a psychologist, a doctor, a gay, <laughs> please call in. If it's all about us, <laughs> this is the question. I'm not convinced by this whole, um, cleavage looks like an ass. that's No, why not to Steve, I nor think, am I. I it's, think it's, it's, a bit mock, it's a bit of mock, uh, anthropology. I didn't think it would be under scrutiny. <laughs> I think uh, it's more likely that the reason men find cleavage attractive is because they know there's a lovely pair of bristles down there. Yes, yeah, so it's like, ooh, ooh, here we are. If that's, if that's what's on show. <laughs> exactly, imagine what, what's down there. If that's in the front window, right, <laughs> what's yeah, you got to go in the shop? <laughs> oh dear! Oh. <laughs> Bill Mackay on XFM 104.9. If it's all about asses, Steve, why don't gays like a bit of tit? I think the there might be a lecture on that yeah. at uh, the Royal Institute tonight. I'm oh, not sure. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I think he's given it. Brilliant. Tell you something else though. That's about cavemen and that. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm, not really. Go on. Do you know? Um, I love the idea of a little gay fella. It's he's, he's Pulled a bird. He's just he, all he's done. He's focused on the cleavage, and he's going, "That's a lovely ass." Yeah. Right. He's got a bat. Why do? Do 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 do. Pulls the dress down. No, <laughs> it's <laughs> ass. I've been gone. There's boobs. Boobs. I hate ah, boobs. They're my worst. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, Carl. Caveman and that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Back to it. Doesn't drop yeah. a beat, does he? Do you know, like when when you get a bit scared, yeah. and, you, and the airs on your back and that sort of go up. Well, I haven't got a particularly hairy back, but go on. No, but on your neck or whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever. yeah. yeah. Um, on your head. Do you know- <laughs> Not on your face, but- <laughs> Do you know where that comes from? Do you know why that happens? Why it happens? Yeah. To probably- to look more fierce. Yeah. Probably residue of like the erectile tissue would the- you know, um, would make you look apes and that would make you look slightly bigger, your outline bigger. Is that it? Is that the answer? Yeah, just cavemen in front of dinosaurs and that, this one went, oh. <laughs> and then- Well it wasn't cavemen in front of dinosaurs, was it? Cause cavemen weren't alive when dinosaurs were alive. There was a couple knocking about. Right, okay, fair enough. It was- there was a crossover point, surely. Uh, no. Not dinosaurs like- 15 15 million. Um, was the- uh, yeah, probably the- uh, yeah, the Ice Age, there were still- there no. were still big reptiles. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the dinosaurs did not exist Well, who gave when... the dinosaurs a name? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> the no, I don't know. Names. He's- listen, he's using- he's using cavemen as any genus of homo. It, I, right. I know he's thinking of the Flintstones, <laughs> yeah. but I'm giving him a bit of- I'm giving him like, you know, an instep into evolution here. But, um, I should just point out, you know cavemen didn't have cars which they motored by running along yeah. the street. And they didn't- they didn't mix cement in pelicans. You're- you're aware <laughs> of that. <laughs> right. Go on, Carl. Um, Go on. the Rockbusters answer? Yeah, you've got to get the out of the way. I'd love to. Uh, number one was, don't be stealing my tools, take your sisters. The initials were NK, that was Nick Ursel, right? Nick Ursel? Nick Ursel. 80s. I don't know, I've never heard of that band. Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Nick Kershaw, yeah. Nick, oh, sorry, what, what, Nick I don't understand it, Nick. How does Nick Kershaw? Second one. one. No, 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 don't move on! Nick Kershaw! What's Nick Kershaw? <laughs> Jesus. All right. It doesn't <laughs> count, it's not on, a clue. Let's just leave it behind us, alright? Second one was, uh, buy it if you want, you know, I'm not bothered, you can think about it, come back, have a, have a look around, think it over. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not fussed. The initials were SC, that was soft cell, right? That works. Yeah. Well done. That works. Right. And that's good. I can, uh, I can play some pin bowling again. That's O. That's outcast. Right? What does that mean? Outcast? You know, you, you, you broke your arm, right? Uh, got the oh, cast that's on ridiculous. It. <laughs> that's ludicrous. I mean, that's ridiculous. You broke your arm, you were in a cast, you got rid of the cast, you're out cast. Did yeah. anyone get that? Yeah. I, I mean, I am stunned. I think, to be fair, that was because how many bands begin with O? Yeah. I think that's why people got it. Exactly. But they were guesses, yeah. I could probably make Oasis work if I tried hard enough. We've done that. <coughs> sure, pardon me. Uh, uh, uh. God. So, uh, outcast. That's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? But it's ridiculous. What is it worse than that? What is it worse than that? No, I remember, I remember when I did my wrist in and it fixed, I went temping bowling. Why did you do your, so, you do so your wrist So, what you did. Brilliant. So, next week's quiz is what am I thinking? 
You're an idiot, Carl. Play yes, a record. Yes, Why say. did you do your wristing? <laughs> crash. A, a what? Crash. A crash. crash. You had a crash? Yeah. That sounds like a story we've not explored. Not much to it. I just went on a free, uh, sort of rally day. <laughs> uh, got in this car, I'd been working all night, right, so I wasn't the best condition to be whizzing around the track <laughs> in a car. Sure. Uh, like a Formula One type car. Yeah. Uh, spun out of control, hit some mud, smashed it all in, uh, wrote it off, and I didn't realise I'd done a load of damage until... Well, you landed on your head, but you were fine. <laughs> yeah! Who's the winner? Mike Godley. <laughs> <laughs> Time from the Jayhawks on XFM 104.9, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl. We're having a good him. time. We are indeed. All right. Yeah. Carl, what you got lined up for us now? Um, right, well, you've got a choice. Nelly dead? You can have a bit of educating. Yeah, let's have educating. Come on. Educating, uh, Ricky. I sh can we just clarify what this is? I think a lot of new listeners perhaps don't- aren't familiar with this. It's when Carl looks on the internet and finds a weird story about, um, you know, the, the double- double knob. Um, fun, and it tells me about it, and it's usually not true. <laughs> okay. If it is true, I know it already. <laughs> Go on, and Carl. Um, they're not really weird stuff. It's just stuff that's gone on. That's yeah. interested me. That's all it's yeah. about. And I, about it. I hmm. should just confirm that we've had a number of emails that say the baby born without a knob and then having one transplanted from a baby that luckily enough had two knobs, yeah. is apparently true. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. listen, yeah. listen, so, uh, I, I don't question that you that. could be born with a deformity and get someone's, you know, fingers, knobs, uh, what I'm saying is, it didn't happen with a doctor goes, I'll leave with it, I, I don't believe it, that baby's got two knobs. <laughs> exactly. What a coincidence. <laughs> I bet that little bit of information isn't in there, is it? Sure. That he went out the door, I'm gonna get a coffee, came back, uh, oh yeah, hold on, look, here's an extra knob, I've had an extra knob. <laughs> uh, it, We'll put that knob on there. Perfect. <laughs> right, well you've gone, you've, uh, you've opted for the headline, it nearly died. Right? Yeah. It's about this elephant. Yeah. Um, eight years old. Yeah. In Africa. Yeah. Right? It's had quite a good life and that. Yeah. Um, but then what happens is, I don't know what it's been eating, but um, <laughs> his teeth fall out. Yeah, that's what the, uh, most elephants die of that because they grind them down, the, the teeth until they can't chew anymore and they- most yeah. elephants of old- uh, dying of old age with an elephant is the fact that you haven't got teeth anymore. Hmm. Well it's had a good innings, it was 80. Yeah. Right? Um, so anyway- They used so to pop the food up and feed it to it and it lived quite happily? No, what they did was, the village got together, said uh- oh, Chewed the food for that's it. That's sad, isn't it? Um, made it some- False, false teeth. teeth. Made it some teeth. Out of wood. Wooden teeth for this elephant, that's 80. <laughs> what do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know if it's true, I don't know, I mean... No, it is, forget that, you've been proved wrong once, it is true, what do you think about that? Oh, but, but it, it, Carl, it's like saying, yeah, me auntie Nora saw a ghost, what do you think about that? There's no comment, I can't comment on it. Would you have gone to the trouble, is what I'm saying? To build an elephant's it's teeth? It's 80, it's 80. Yeah. With all the problems... Africa's got on that, and they're messing about making tea for an elephant. What problems have Africa got? Well, there's not enough food to go around, so if an elephant's dead, that's a bit more food left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why? Yeah, but you're assuming this is in the middle of a village where there was famine and starvation. <laughs> it might have been, it, it might have been South Africa, Kenya, no. you don't know, it's not all, it's not all Ethiopia if or- If it was a busy city, people in the village wouldn't have time to be messing about with making teeth and that, would they? It was a little village. <laughs> a little village. <laughs> yeah. And a local elephant. The local elephant, like at local post office, I'll meet you by the elephant. No, to be fair, Rick, I think I saw Bob Geldof on TV saying, please, people, <laughs> stop making elephants' teeth. Uh, they are eating all the food, we're sending it over there. F the number, where's the teeth? <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know, it's possible. I mean, teeth. it's possible. It's possible that they've made this elephant some, some, uh, some dentures. It is possible. Wouldn't yeah. it have been easier to just- Pulp it. Uh, exactly. I'd have thought- it up, Serve it some soup or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're making his teeth, you know, it's a really, so I'd, I'd have thought, it's a, you know, I wouldn't have thought it would work for very long and I wouldn't have thought the elephant uh, would understand that it was teeth, so uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to have thought that the villagers could do it. I mean, top veterinary surgeons could have done some of but I think they made it all goodwill, but I don't want to thought it worked, so they probably end up dying or pulping it like I suggested. But, you know, thanks very much, play a record. No, uh, but didn't you say something about wooden teeth, someone, you know, I'd Wooden teeth. Mm. 
I don't know, I think that was possibly my grandparents. They had wooden teeth. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was wooden. I think the palate was wood, and then the teeth were. As you would normally. That's yeah, like from the 16th century, though, isn't well, it? Well, it was. It was the 1940s. They used to hammer them in without anaesthetic. Really? Yeah. Just oh. that put into the roots, it wouldn't. Oh God! That's, that's a rubbish time, isn't it? To and, and, and 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 other people's teeth, other dead people's teeth, you could replace it. Just that, just bang it in for a while. Oh. Oh God! Unbelievable. Oh dear. Play a record, Carl. If you've had your teeth, if you've had teeth hammered into your gums. Placebo, English summer rain on XFM 104.9. Right, okay, you got the final educating Ricky Carl. Uh, get a load of this court case. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what happened was, right, uh... Allegedly. A fella's in court for something that he shouldn't have done, right? Yeah. You've got all the detail then at your fingertips. And the jury says, uh, he's guilty, right? And the judge went, what, he's not guilty, off you go then, right? He misheard it. Um, he couldn't do anything about it, cos once, once the judge has sort of said, you're not guilty, off you go, off you go, you can go home. And the jury were like, well, you, oh yeah, what are you doing? They said he's, he's guilty. I was like, what, what do you think of the Thorns albums? I'm quite a big fan, Rick. Yeah, I like that sort of alt country sound. I think I know. Uh, I like the compilation you made me. That was that sort of thing. really good. The Jay Hawks, <laughs> thanks for that one. There was the yeah, Angin one, wasn't there? There was the Angin one that happened. I used to there. Um, have you, what, what bands have you got been checking out recently? Any new um, things? Just exploring all kinds of stuff. Obviously, you know, I like dipping back into the old stuff. I've tell you, I've been appreciating a lot recently, Rick. Billy Bragg. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah great guy. Great guy. Isn't he playing? Isn't he playing? He's playing in March. Yeah, you might want to try. You heard about the, the, the Angin one when, What's the, this when the fellow was? Sorry, mate. Go, go on. When the fellow was Ong. Well, uh, he, he was Ong and uh, Ong. He was, was Ong. He was Ong by rope. So isn't that? No, no. I think it was. Wasn't he uh, a Chinese emperor? <laughs> and the Ming, wasn't he young? Yeah. Sorry, was sorry. He was young. Some fella who'd done something. They they young him. It's not a word anymore. He was young. Well, don't be doing that again, because you said squoes wasn't a word, and then I showed you a menu today that someone sent, and it said fresh orange. Yeah. Squoes. In inverted commas, and next to it was the word colour spelled C O L O R. So presumably on the American menu. Right, in which case, there's loads of American words that we don't use, or it's just a badly typed piece of work. Anyway, there was a bloke that was on. He was on and that, uh, but he, d he didn't die. On and that, he was definitely a Chinese, yeah. De on and yeah. that, yeah. I remember him now, yeah. He didn't die, and they said, oh, just hang on a minute whilst we change the rope and that, and he stood there waiting, changed yeah. the rope. They, uh, tried to, you know, do it again, and, uh, didn't work. It didn't work, right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. um, they got another rope, right? No. Didn't work. And, uh, and then they, they had to let him go, cos it's like a, there's a well-known saying or something from, from this thing. Yeah. What? Have, have you seen, um, have you, do you like, uh, Omar Corazon by, um, Tim Burton's new single? I don't know that I'm actually saying it. brilliant. Can we play a bit later? No. Yeah, can we play um, let's play a record now and, um, we'll, um, talk more of it later. Yeah. Hey, can you, Carl, can you, um, can you shut up? <laughs> oh my car is on. Tim Burgess, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Right. Well, uh, we're running out of time here. Yeah. We had Carl in a little film, but I think we've really got time for monkey news, you know? Yeah. What are you thinking, Carl? Yeah, if you wanna do that. Yeah, let's do monkey news. Alright. Play uh, the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Uh right, there's this monkey, right? Oh yeah. I think his name was number six or number seven or something, right? In this in this lab. Right? Yeah. And uh anyway, it's in there. <laughs> with like, you know, the rabbits and little mice and stuff like that. And uh the the rabbit smoking. The nurse, right? The nurse, not well, not the nurse. The, the the woman who works in the lab. What would you call her? The nurse. 
Depends. What, was, what turns out her job was, if she was a lab assistant, you call her a lab assistant. Right. I mean, they probably call her by her name. All right, lab assistant, right. Kirsty. So, uh, so she's- I think it's Kirsty. probably Kirsty. Right, Kirsty Morris. Well, she's in there, right? Yeah. And she doesn't work with many people and that. She's mainly on her own with, you know, just putting lipstick on rabbits and stuff like that, right? She didn't fancy that? <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> she's fancy her. She's putting on lipstick, she didn't fancy that, she's hairy legs. He gets, he gets pally, right, yeah. with, with this woman. Yeah. Because, you know, it, 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 it gets to a point when she sees him every day. <laughs> she's like, let's <laughs> play, so it tries to string out like it's a narrative love story. <laughs> let, let's the chip put his hand out and grabbed her, and then you're thinking that he made a move on her. So, right, come on, he's allowed out, he's allowed out. Oh, it's not a story, is it? He's allowed out of the cage and what have you. Yeah. Okay, so, um, he's wandering about, and as time goes on, he's watching what she's doing more and more, yeah. right? So, he, he notices, like, the code on the door, right? <laughs> right. She, whatever, two four seven or whatever. Yeah. He goes right. I've clocked that. I've got yeah. that. I'll remember that, right? Yeah. And mm. then he goes right. There's a lot of lipstick and that knocking about, a lot of makeup. Right. Okay. No, no. no. There's no, no way. Finish. No. Because so, Steve, you know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. So he's there. It's ridiculous. And he's finish. going well. If it's there, you know what I mean. So, so while she's messing about with the rabbit, he gets there. He's in front of the mirror, putting a little bit of lippy on. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> No! I it's know! Gone too far. It's, it's gone too far! No, it's gone too far, Steve! Right, Your mic's off, Rick. He's finishing right. the story. So Show mine off as well. It's, gone it's looking pretty good. I didn't mention the mascara! It's looking alright, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right? He goes, right, is, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right? He goes, right, here's my chance. He's looking good. Two four seven out the door. Your man's there. He's like, all right, Kirsty, right? Don't talk shit. I feel free from cream. The spirit's the last track, isn't it, guys? I imagine on XFM one four Well, I mean, I, yeah, I've got nothing to say after that ridiculous, ridiculous story. <laughs> I mean. That's that's worse than the bank robbery to me. Yeah. That he clocks out and and the bloke on the desk. All right, Kirsty. Oh, you're two foot shorter <laughs> and hairy. She yes. wasn't a looker anyway. Sorry. <laughs> she wasn't a looker anyway. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, play a record and say We'll see you next week oh, for the last time. Oh, Everett. Oh, I'd love to end with Everett. See you later. It's brilliant. Going out on a bang. <laughs> Faded. Fortune Faded by, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9 with Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. Yes, we've said that before, of course. So don't yeah. get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had some highs, there's some lows, some laughs, some yeah, tears. Carl, you're concentrating. Well, it's mainly from the audiences. Yeah. Now, uh, before we get into that, before we get into talking about maybe some of the high jinks we've had, looking back, looking forward as well. Yeah. Uh, I came in, Carl was sitting at the desk, he went, alright, I went, alright, really, yeah. He went, see that Alan Clark Diaries? I went, no, I didn't, he went, uh, no, no, I a lot of people talking about it. He went, I've never kept a diary. <laughs> Keeping a diary will always get you into trouble. <laughs> and I said, like Anne Frank, what did you say, Carl? The woman in the cupboard? That's what he said. The woman in the cupboard? And I went, save it. Save it. You nev never speak to Carl off air. Save it all I know. when we're on the wireless. Went, but what does she do? What does she do except be in a cupboard? <laughs> what does she have to write about? And I said, well, her thoughts. Do you know, do you know Anne Frank? That's all, all I know about Anne is. There's no point pretending it. Anne! Anne. <laughs> I know Wait, stuff. Yeah. Right, um. Well, just, just tell us everything you know about Anne Frank. Uh, she was in a cupboard. <laughs> What else? If she didn't do that, I wouldn't know about her, seriously. <laughs> That's all I know about her. <laughs> yeah. So what did she do? But what did she do? How do you think we know, about, we, we know about, we know about her cupboard because of her book, don't we? But hang on, what, what, in the bigger scheme of things, why was she in a cupboard? I, I, I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. You don't know anything else about Anne Frank beyond the fact that, to <laughs> quote you, she was in a cupboard. Well, what's she done then? You tell me, why should I know more about Firstly, her? Firstly, I don't think she was in a cupboard. <laughs> she wasn't in a cupboard. She was in an attic. Alright. Yeah. So yeah. what was she doing? 
She was hiding from the Tidy Nazis. <laughs> she was hiding from the Nazis. But well, isn't that the first place to look? Sort of <laughs> <laughs> work, work from the top down. <laughs> Oh, they weren't specifically looking for Anne Frank. <laughs> they weren't going, where is she? Where's Frank? If she gets that book out, we are <laughs> in the deep <laughs> shit. We've got to stop the book. <laughs> they were just looking generally. Uh, she well, was, I think she was, what, she, she was 13, 14, she was yes. hiding, she was Jewish and she was hiding, this was Amsterdam, didn't she? Yeah, as much of her family were having to hide, being yeah. helped by, you know, friends, yeah. non-Jewish. In, in a cupboard. In a, I mean, a cupboard, cupboards, you know. And how long, you know, how long did she? Sort of hide up there for. Until so she was caught. Long enough to write a book. So she even got caught after all that. What do you mean, so she even got caught? We're talking about one of the great, you know, humanist tragedies of our times, and you're going, she couldn't even stay hidden. What do you mean, did she get caught? No, I'm just saying, uh, like, you know, it's not a great tip then, is it? Do you know what I mean? She didn't do it well. She didn't hide until I escaped it. Her diaries are not a manual on how to hide from people. <laughs> it's not how to win. Well, I, don't, I don't know anything about her. And we might be going down the, 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 some ground that's a bit dodgy. I don't know enough about it. Maybe it's best just leaving it. All I was saying is yep. diaries, do you know, what, what do you do them for? Have you kept them, Steve? Never kept a diary, no. Right. I can understand your fear that it might get discovered. Someone might read it. Find out all about your inner secrets. Of course, the good thing about you is you tell everyone what you think about them. Yeah. Yeah, but no. yeah, there, there's, there, no one's gonna find a diary and go, oh god, can't believe it. Carl doesn't like my haircut. Yeah, yeah. Carl think, Carl thinks I look like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> yeah, I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, I told you that. Do you think they'll last though, diaries and that? <laughs> no, because they were a bit of a time killer, weren't they? It was something to do at the end of the day, whereas now there's iPods and that. <laughs> <Got them. laughs> He's fantastic! The iPod, I mean. the iPod of Anne Frank. Yeah. yeah the I mean. new from Sony. That'd yeah. be great, wouldn't it? All the greatest hits. <laughs> Who could forget? <laughs> oh, well, dear. Well, I believe that then. I didn't really know it was that? that deep. I thought it was just like a, you know. You thought it was like, didn't you? Adrian Mole type did, thing. Did, did, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what are we doing? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thorns from my favourite album of last year, that. And uh, I can't remember. We'll be doing a bit of that, playing some of our favourite songs. We've uh, got a couple of requests. Oh, in really? fact, yeah, we've got a one of the celebrity requests, Matt Lucas from oh, yeah. uh, Little Britain, is yeah. listening in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it was, is it your last show? I said, yeah. And I said, do you want me to play a record? And he said, what's your favourite group? Guess Matt Lucas's favourite group. Now, remember, I him and David are. The new darlings of comedy. Yeah. They're cool, they're trendy, everyone lo loves Little Britain. They're comedy geniuses, they're only gonna get bigger. What's his favourite group of all time? Um, oh, that is tricky. Uh, level 42. Uh, no. Carl, have a guess. Well, there's gonna be something weird, innit, if you're saying this. Well. So, uh, how old? How old's the band? Uh, they're probably about as old as him. Oh, no, no. oh, Carl, have a guess. Abba. No, it's, uh, why did you say Abba? They're good, aren't they? Um, <laughs> no, it's The Proclaimers. <laughs> the Proclaimers? <laughs> yeah! Really? Yeah. And I know he's listening, but, you know. I mean, there's wrong with The Proclaimers, I just can't imagine anyone getting that excited about them. I bet that's why he likes you, because you, you hang out with him, don't you? I do hang out with him. He he's thinks he's, like, yeah. it's like, it's like the closest thing, he, yeah. can, he, he knows one of The Proclaimers. Wait till he meets my twin brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a field day, he isn't he? It. Yeah. So I, I was on this and I said, I, I, I can't play the Proclaimers, but we're playing another. Where, the, what, what, where did they come? Because I don't really remember the Proclaimers particularly from when I was young. Well, let me yeah. give you a little blast. I gave a little, a little, <laughs> but in two part harmony. <laughs> of course. That was the, that was the but main thing. They were thing. very popular for a while, weren't they? I think they had, um, sort of three big hits in yeah. sort of about 1980. When was it? Yeah. Oh, I forget. Yeah, uh, I is. Scottish. Okay. They did sing in Scottish accents, which I thought was quite refreshing. They didn't yeah. do the fake uh, American thing. No, that that was that was good. Yeah. But again, I just can't imagine sort of being I, in that. When when would I be in the mood to put on a procla Proclaimers record? When you've run out of Crankies stuff, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. If, if you've played all your Crankies records, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and you the Muppets know. album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pop on the Proclaimers. Sure. Now we were talking before the break about um, Anne Frank in her cupboard. Yes. Yes. Now. 
I'm still a little bit concerned that Carl's not quite got his head around Anne Frank's diary. Yeah. It's not like a children's book. It's not like The Lion, Anne Frank and the Wardrobe. <laughs> no. She's not just no. going to a fantasy land when she goes into the attic. I'm just glad that old Mother Hubbard <laughs> didn't help the Nazis. <laughs> sure. Because that's the first place she'd yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? The Nazis go, we've, uh, we've, we've got old Mother, but she thinks she knows where she is. Yeah. She'd have gone yeah. straight there. I think with Hubbard is I, uh, if I just briefly mention Hubbard. <laughs> um, <laughs> now Hubbard goes to the cupboard to get, I can't remember exactly. Her poor to, dog a bone. She goes to get a dog, the dog a, a bone. bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was the bare. Cupboard was bare the poor and dog so had the poor dog had is there, is there more to that than I, because that's all I remember. Is there, is there further verses? Does she finally get a bone? Does she go on an adventure? Oh, what, you mean the second verse is, then she looked in the <laughs> fridge and realised that's where she kept the bones yeah. and so the dog was laughing. <laughs> exactly. No, there isn't another verse. Not, that's all of it. I it? think so. I don't know what's the to get up all alone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so the poor dog had none. none. No, I think that's the end of it. I think it's immoral. <laughs> it's I think it's immoral that, um, What? What's the moral? Well, well, uh, if you go- if you got a dog, keep some bones in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because I always have, even as a kid I remember thinking that it's quite a tragic sort of picture they paint. I imagine maybe she's it's lost It's short, her... isn't it? It, it is, is really short. It's, it's over, isn't it? It's- it's- uh, that's amazing. But she- I always wondered whether perhaps she's had a nervous breakdown. Maybe her husband's died recently. She's just not got any food she in. She doesn't know- she's just She doesn't really know what's going on. The dog's, na you know, yapping away. Eventually she kind of wakes out of this kind of depressed stupor. She goes to the cupboard. There's nothing there. It's just a really depressing, morbid- Sort of tell. I don't know if maybe it's originated from something in history. I know that Jack and Jill went up the hill and they fell down again. That's a story about illicit lovers. That's apparently based on that. And uh, obviously, Ring of Ring of Roses. It plague. dates back to plague times. So yeah. I don't know about Hubbard. Um, Humpty well, Dumpty. Not so <laughs> sure about this. I, I. This is something I remember as a kid thinking. What? At what point was it decided <laughs> that Humpty Dumpty was a giant Eggman? I don't know! Because it's there's not nothing in the actual in the rhyme. rhyme. There's no actually, it's not Humpty Dumpty, it's not, the Eggman at all. all. I don't know. My, my concern is more if, I mean his parents were a little bit cruel because if you are <laughs> the Dumpties, Dumpty. yeah. I'll say Surrey, <laughs> yeah. don't call your firstborn Humpty. Yeah. Because straight away it's going to be embarrassing for yeah. him at school, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it, I'm just saying, I'm trying to go all the things on the I'm saying that. Is that it as well? That's all of it. Oh, and God. And also, I don't mean to be pedantic, because I, I know it's a, a children's Is, is it like an Edward Lear thing, or? That's before that, is it? But it, I don't mean to be pedantic again, but if you're gonna, if you've got a giant Eggman and he's fallen into bits, yeah. you know, all the King's men, fine, they're there, they can piece that together yeah. again. Don't send horses in. No, because they- That's just a whole not eggy, horsey mess. Not extra mess. <laughs> they're, 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 they're gonna make it worse. They're just gonna be standing on it. They are gonna make it worse. It's not they're a great They're standing on it, get the horse out of the way. No, he's definitely there. But again, maybe I'm sure some of the, you know, the mental people- It was probably, it was, if it was- is it pre Lewis Carroll? If it's Lewis Carroll, it just came with the illustration. I guess that so. some he gave it to someone to illustrate. He go illustrate. I'm just jumping. He goes. We've made him an egg. Yeah, a sort of egg with eyes and a face. Yeah. I mean, I it's suppose because the moral of that is if if you're fragile, if you're an, if egg, you're an enormous egg, don't Dumpty, the wall. I get down from the wall. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll tell you what, there'd be no medical... way to happen. Yeah. Frankly, I don't know, Carl. What what was your favourite nursery rhyme when you were growing up? Uh, didn't ever really do that much reading as a kid. He joked. You surprised me. He um, joking. <laughs> uh, one's- what's the one with, um, loads of people in a bed? What's that one? Oh, there was one of the beds and the little one said, roll over. Yeah. Uh, no, because th that's not really even got a story to it, is it? That's but just- hold on though, I'll stop you there. It doesn't even say people. It says there was ten in the bed and the little one, little what? It, they <laughs> could be anything. I don't know what they are. Roll over, and they all rolled over and one fell out. There was nine in the bed and the little one said, Roll over. Now, where is the little one in the I bed? don't know, but I, 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 worse than that, what has he got over the other nine? But you can demand they roll out of the bed. And why is no one getting back in? Yeah, they they're just, just lying on the floor. We're here now. Yeah. I don't know. But is how, he... how does that end as well? What? Where's, where's that going? It goes on, there was one in the bed and the little one said, again, he just says, presumably he's telling himself roll over. Yeah. There was one in the bed and there was a roller. So, they, so he rolled over and one fell out, that's him. That's him. There was none in the bed. And the little one said, roll over. So n now he's calling the shots, presumably laying yeah, on the pile there. of other- They're just still rolling around. I don't know, I don't know, Carl. We've got to look into this. If anyone knows why Dumpty was an egg, if- if Hubbard <laughs> fa eventually found a dog a bone, and what was the little one doing? What was the little- what did the little one think he was doing, for well, God's sake? When yeah. I saw my dad last year, uh, he was telling me about one, about a fella who's got some clothes you can see through. What's that one? You don't the mean the Emperor's New Clothes? clothes. Yeah, what's what's that one about? Well, that's a genuinely good little parable, that. Yeah, because it's 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 now used for um, people who are scared to sort of slag something off because it's 
it's sort of like really cool and and they don't want to be the one that that shouts it and then one person goes hold on very I've very seen briefly Carl, very very briefly uh, the king wants some new clothes right he's the king he goes who's going to make me some new clothes various people come to me and says I don't know that I don't know that it's not interesting enough one guy who's just a bit of a con artist he comes along he goes I've made you this magic suit look and it's nothing he it's goes invisible. put it on the king puts on nothing because there is nothing but thinks there's something because you know he wants to buy into it and everything and he goes it's the finest stitching he goes look at it can you see it uh, 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 no uh, they ask that only a genius can see how good this suit is and the king goes yeah yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant yeah it's great. And then he goes out and just, is it a woman or a little kid? Well, everyone's goes, applauding, they're going, you look great, even though his tackle's hanging out, he's, you know, he's nothing. Even though he's got a king size, sort of like, bit of meat and two veg, yeah. wobbling, dragging down the street. <laughs> exactly. And, and then one little boy goes, he's not wearing anything. The king is in the all together, the all together. Know that one? So, well, did anyone else buy one? I was, oh. Okay, play record. Play record, Carl. Play record. Carl. Just play a song. Jesus. Travis, writing to reach you on XFM 104.9, all right? A couple of emails here, try and respond to our, uh, requests for, um, nursery rhyme related information. I'll go on. Nikki Williams says that she was at infant school and she had a nursery rhyme book and the book, in the book, and this may, again, may just be the illustrations, but apparently the ten in the bed in there were small baby monkeys, which you'll be loving, Carl. But, uh, again, I, I suspect that might just be the illustration. Yeah. The, the, uh, I remember I had a book of nursery rhymes when I was little and, uh, my, my brother, um, it was, uh, older than me, and I was about five, so he was about sixteen. And I remember him and his mate just absolutely cracking up because it said, um, up Jack Trot and home, uh, up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper. He went to bed and bandaged his knob, N-O-B, with vinegar and brown paper. I've since found out the knob is like the old English for head, but I didn't know why they were laughing. Of course. They were just cracking yeah, up. This, yeah, this yeah. was, whenever one of my mates' brothers came around, he, he got, said, where's your nursery rhyme book? And he'd read it to him. Yeah. And it was just the funniest thing in the world. The, uh, the brown paper and vinegar was a popular method, because didn't Jack and Jill use that? They used something similar. No, that was Jack and Jill. That was Jack and Jill. Yeah, that's Jack when he broke his crown, yeah. which obviously, oh, that means his head as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's fractured his skull, on a sort of like an outcrop of rock. Yeah. And then, uh. Does that still use the brown paper and vinegar? I, d I don't Manchester? think it is. I don't know, maybe in Manchester they're still <laughs> using that, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Tracy and John Burton say that they, uh, reckon Humpty Dumpty was actually a cannon that used to sit on the walls of the castle, uh, in Colchester where they lived. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That would make sense. Sit on a wall. I had a great fall. He's one of them couldn't put them together again. So, it, he had a Oh, they broke the cannon or it meant it exploded. Maybe the cannon fell apart. Because people used to get blown up by cannons just doing it wrong, didn't they? Sure. Which is hoist by your own petard. Right. Where that comes from. Right, right, Coming right. back and blowing up in your face. So that makes slightly more sense because you would want to send for the King's men then. Yeah, and the horses. I think the horses uh, just came along anyway. Well, that, well, that, it, that, that was, that was quicker. <laughs> sure. Uh, the quick King's men, it took them about three minutes with the horses there in about a minute. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. but I mean, if it blew up, there's nothing I could do. Yeah. So we got to the bottom of that. See, the educational, Carl. See, this is real education. Mm. You know what it's I mean? It's got a bit heavy though, doesn't it? What, what, Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, it has got a little bit heavy. Let's try and let's dumb it down a little bit. What do you want to do? Mary, Mary, quite contrary? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit. Hang on a minute. What? Before you even get to Rockbusters. Oh, man alive, there are loads more verses to Old Mother Hubbard. Are there? I'm gonna digest these while we play the ads and I'll see if there's any salient information I can give you afterwards. Brilliant! <laughs> Long time coming on XFM 104.9. With Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. XFM 104.9. Sad. Um, we've established that Hubbard went to the cupboard, Rick. Yeah. Get the dog a bone, the cupboard was empty. Yeah. As we all know. And so the dog, the dog didn't have any. End of story. So the dog didn't have any. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, wait. Go on, what, uh, what, what, it turns what, what, what? out there's a, what appears to be something like 15 other verses. Not really. Unbelievable. I'm not going to go through all of them, Rick. Right. Um, any, 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 um, any information? Well, basically, well, basically I can tell you straight away that the, do the dog, uh, initially had none. Yeah. She went to the baker's to buy him some bread. When she came back, the poor dog was dead. Right, you're pretty upset about that. Yeah. She went to the joiners to buy him a coffin. When she came back, the poor dog was laughing. I don't know what he's up to. Right. She took a clean dish to get him some tripe, uh. but when he came back, when she came back, he was smoking a pipe. I mean... I know, so the dog was winding her up then at the beginning, being dead. I mean, he's pushing his luck. But, especially if she's already depressed. But, do you know, if I was that dog, right, and I live with old Mother Hubbard, Right, all that faffing around. I'm going. I know there's no bones in the cupboard. <laughs> exactly. Right. What do you mean you're going to get me some bread? 
I'm a dog. Yeah. I don't, I'm not interested in bread. Get, get me some hamburgers. Yeah. So, I, I, I'd start, I think I'd start winding her up. She went to the hour house to get him some beer. When she came back, the dog sat in a chair. See, I just <laughs> said the dog had turned queer. <laughs> yeah. Major Ryan believes and also it? get a little, you know, he smoked, uh, 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 he's smoking a pipe, he's having a laugh. I'm beginning to wonder He's bent. I'm, he's bent. I'm beginning to wonder if this <laughs> is based on fact, though, in any way, because she went to the grocer's to buy him some fruit. When she came back, he was playing the flute. He's gay. <laughs> no, he's it's, it is the flute, it's not, uh... Now this, I didn't even know there was a goat involved. She went oh to, no! She went to the tailors to buy him a coat. When she came back, he was riding the goat. Yeah, there you go, dirty <laughs> little. Oh, what? She went He's, to the hat. Well, she went to the hat to buy him a hat. When she came back, he was feeding the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it. So I, I'm, I'm thinking the pipe's a crack pipe. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You, I think the gay thing's beginning to stand up. Go on. She oh. went to the barbers to buy him a, <laughs> to buy him a wig. When she came back, he was having a frig. <laughs> He was dancing a jig. <laughs> <laughs> he's dancing a jig. You're dancing a jig. Oh, um, he's dancing a jig, smoking a pipe, shagging a go. This is a, this is a bit of a left field one, though. She went to the cobblers to buy him some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he needs shoes! I bet they're here. I bet they're high heels. Wait but, a second though. But, she went to the cobblers to buy him some shoes. When she came back, you're never gonna believe this. But, he was reading the news. <laughs> <laughs> she was reading the news. <laughs> um, Brilliant! She went to the seamstress to buy him some linen. Again, don't know why. When she came back, the dog was a spinning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she went to the hosiers to buy him some hose. When she came back, he was dressing his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she want to but this is this is the big payoff that we've been building to. Right. The dame made a curtsy, the dog made a bow, the dame said your servant, the dog said bow wow. Right. I mean Okay. I you know <laughs> Um I'm gonna probably do a few more verses okay. during the next <laughs> on the course of the show. Yeah. Listen, okay. before we move on, I should just say that we've had various people saying what was in the bed and what was the final line of the bed yeah. thing. Why do they care? Uh, it's extraordinary, isn't it? We talked about politics in the past, yeah. great music, we played great songs. Yeah, we've got monkey news coming up talking about politics. <laughs> 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 um, but Danny's said that apparently it ends with one in the bed, little one said good night. Because he was all he, happy, he had he the bed to himself, and there's, nine, Ava, of his, there's nine of his mates piled on the floor. Rick, but Ava counters that by saying, actually, one of the better little ones said, come back, because you felt lonely. So, We're never gonna get I, don't know, this. I don't know, Rick. This is the same as the Kennedy thing. <laughs> it's there's it's, it's, it's run loads run. of different opinions. Conspiracy we don't, theories. I know, we, we don't know what's going on. But is Jimmy Webb, we go on. I, 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 Jimmy Webb, Galveston, fantastic version on XFM, 104.9. You know what, Steve? I know, that, I know, you know, people are going to miss the talk about little Chinese fellas, little gay fellas, little monkey fellas, and all that. <laughs> yeah. But I think they're going to miss some great tunes as well. I know, I'd, ho I'd hope so. She went to the jewellers to buy him a clock, but when she got back, <laughs> what was he sucking? <laughs> <laughs> a chalk ice. A chalk ice. Fine. So fine, respectable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I sort of feel like, you know, one thing we've never done, Rick, is we've never pandered to people, but as it's the last show, um, we've got to give the audience what they want. Right, what's this? Well, yeah, and I was gonna say things they don't want as well. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, and, well, just basically to keep a smile on Carl's face. Yeah. Uh, I say a smile, a sort of, not quite a scowl. Yeah, he never really smiles. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just brilliant as a chance for him to have a go. It's like, you know, you, you indulge a, an annoying child. The only time Carl laughs is for no apparent reason. Yeah. What do you think, like? What do you mean? Well, it's sometimes you'll go, <laughs> and I know you'll be thinking of what a monkey could do. Yeah, it's like it's like people who've had electro shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's tied down, biting on exactly, something, yeah. biting on a big leather pad. Uh, let me just tell you briefly what the, the prices are. It's that the number that of looks like a piece of shit. That you know, <laughs> well, that, let me tell you, let me tell you. There's a number of uh, there's a number what? of mediocre CDs and DVDs. That, that is real but time. Mainly, yeah, that? what about this? It's the Lord of the Rings collector's edition. Oh, well, the movies you're thinking? No, it's no. the Radio Four adaptation. It's uh, it's only 14 hours long, Rick. Oh, that is throw that away. <laughs> so, pop that in the bin. <laughs> so that's that is <laughs> just I'll pop it either pop it in the bin or send it to some poor bastard who wins this quiz. <laughs> exactly. If you're willing to take part in the quiz, you deserve. Uh, 14 hours you'd be like yeah. wasted with that uh, Tolkien <laughs> tripe. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, what are the clues then, uh, Carl? Right, as always, just, you know, cryptic clues no. and that. Initials of a band or an artist, yeah. work out, yeah. win, the, win the stuff. Yeah. 
Um, Email only. Yeah, Ricky Dot Gervais, uh, XFM dot co UK. First clue is as follows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Jamaican fella wrote a review for Chris Brown. Oh, it's, it's the girl Jamaican fella. Oh, it's the Jamaican fella. It's the last show and the little Jamaican fella's <laughs> making the variance. Lisa uh, normally suggests that you need to think of the answer in a Jamaican accent. Yeah. Or not. Yeah, or not. Yeah, any accent. Or, or an accent. <laughs> or pronounce the word slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, go on. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Nights. Alright. Yeah. DC is on the initials. DC? D for yeah. Derek? Yeah, okay. DC. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Nights. That's the first one. Um, second one. Three of them. Second one is, uh, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, The Great Soprendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. We should all vote for them. Why is that? What was. That <laughs> <one>? <laughs> the I've just got the first one. E S. E S. E S. Okay. And the last one, um, Steve, what did your dad do? Huh? Steve, what did my dad do? What did your dad do? Is that the question or are you asking me? Well, uh, Ricky, what did your dad do? You can work on anyone. What right. did your dad do? Alright. Alright? That's E. Right? What so, did your dad do? Quickly again, the Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Nights. Right? DC. <laughs> Second one, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, yeah, yeah, Cotfield, yeah, Great Sabrant. No, but that's important. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and the last one, you know, Steve, what did your dad do? Right? Okay. The initial E. Ricky so. dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We don't want to speak to you. Please don't phone up. Remember, you could win some Lord of the Rings tripe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right. Right. There's right. no more on XFM. Right. 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 Last Rockbusters ever, thank <laughs> Thanks no more on their version of I'm Easy on XFM 104.9 with your HD merchant Carl Pilkington. Rick, we- For the last time. We, um, we've only well, really got three topics of discussion on this show. I think you'd agree with that. Uh, Little Chinese Fellas. Little Chinese Fellas. Um, Monkeys. Monkeys. And the gays. The gay people. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to cover all those subjects today. Monkey News is coming later. I'm yeah. sure we can find something to discuss about gay people. We've but done gays. We've done a few gays. I suppose you talked the dog, about the, 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 the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah big yeah. time, big time, big time. Um, I think you'll be enjoyed with this. This is something that's got sent through to us. Uh, I'm not quite sure who by, but thanks yeah. very much for it. It's a story that was in the, uh, the press recently. I'm not going to give you the headline. I think it gives away too much. I think, Carl, you'll be particularly interested in it. A farmer in eastern China, uh, oh, yeah. there we go. basically, he paid £1,300 um, or the Chinese equivalent, to marry the, a woman, and, uh, basically she refused to sleep with him after the wedding, wedding, complaining that she felt unwell. Um, six days after the ceremony, she tried to run away, but the farmer followed her. They, he found her in some neighbouring town. They grappled together. The bogus bride's false breasts fell off. And um, he's hard. <laughs> it wasn't his hard up to his old tricks, It is wasn't his hard. Trying to do another, uh, show in Chinese this time. But it was, it was a man. Oh, and, no. um, uh, apparently, uh, yeah, it was an arranged marriage. I don't know who sorted that out. Did he get his money back? Because <laughs> I, yeah. I think men are cheaper than women, uh, to marry in China, I think. I but, um, <laughs> I mean, you've got to be, you've got to be pretty simple not to realise that the person you're marrying's a, a bloke, surely. Well, no, if he didn't, if he didn't have a little look, what, what, what was, uh, you know, in the back of the store, he just saw the shop window, sort of lovely, lovely little Chinese lady there. Yeah. Right? You know. The, the lovely hair, real breasts. The, well, I'm, I'm, there's lumps where the breasts should be. Yeah. I can only assume they are breasts. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm, you know, you, know you, you see women walking around going, what, are they breasts or are they, you know, stealing sort of grapefruits? No, <laughs> but wouldn't it, there it, have been a lot, I mean, wouldn't there be a quite a sort of long in initiation period when they not if it was first a, introduced and so on? Not if he put his money down, he came and they said, well, I want a bird quickly, here's a, here's a grand. Sure. Get me one. They, they're not going to say, uh, do you want real breasts or? <laughs> they're just going to assume. <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's one. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, little yeah, Chinese yeah. But who is lady. he paying? Where is he buying this woman from? From the Chinese lady shop. <laughs> lady Probably. shop. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. uh. Yeah. Like, uh there's one in Chinatown, I think. <laughs> okay. So, uh. Yeah. Not really a town. Not exactly a town, more novelty street. And the roads are very slippery. Very sticky. I tell you what though. What? I was looking at their menus when I was walking on. They don't waste anything, do they? Why? Duck's tongue on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's better when you say it. Alright, duck's tongue. A duck's tongue, really? You sure that wasn't the proprietor? <laughs> Play. 
warning sign on XFM 104.9. Carl, look at that. What is it? What is it? It's an apple. Right. Right. Okay. What am I doing to it? I'm messing with it. Yeah? And what's happening to it? It's gone off a bit. Yeah! Would you kiss it? No. Have a quick? No. <laughs> Have a go. Would no. you just like just kiss, kiss no, it? No, I wouldn't. Why? And what are we doing this for? <laughs> <laughs> I think I read the same feature on Woken, I'm not sure. <laughs> Seriously, Carl, I'm intrigued to know how much would you yeah, have to be paid kiss to kiss it. Ricky's nipple? No, suck it or lick it or anything like that. Just, mm, like that, just on the nipple. Five grand. Five grand to kiss my nipple? Well, if you do it for five, you do it for one. A thousand pounds cash to kiss no, my no, nipple. No, I'm not doing it. You're joking. A thousand pounds to kiss my nipple? Come on, it's the last show. No, I'm not doing it. Two thousand. If you had the money there and, like, if you had it there now, I might do it. For what? I'm not doing it. Five hundred quid? No. It's not taking it down. What? Well, well, what's that then? Two grand. Two grand? To, so it's, you've gone down from five to two straight away. Look, look. Steve, what's going Did, on? I seriously oh. think I'd like to see you kiss his nipple well, for two thousand. Well, I'm not. It's not going to happen, is it? So. <laughs> If Steve wants it and I want it, that's two to one. It's not gonna happen. I thought it was a democracy, this show. You're not educating Ricky or what? Email in if you'd like to see, <laughs> or rather hear, <laughs> Carl kiss Ricky's <laughs> nipple for two thousand pounds. This is not gonna happen. <laughs> Come on, Carl. <laughs> right. It's not like he's Jono's nipple. Next. <laughs> it's the next. <laughs> next. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, Would you well. kiss this for her? Uh, <laughs> right, okay, quick. wrong. Now, what are you doing? What are you doing educating Ricky? Do you want to set that Why up? Why were you looking, by the way? Why were you looking at that? You didn't have to look at that. What are we uh, doing? Yeah. Go on. Right, uh, this is when I teach Ricky stuff. Um, just give him some headlines to sort of tease him into what's going <laughs> on this week that you might want to know about. Yeah, go right. on. Um, is that important, Ant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. you yeah. got that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be something to do with ants. So, okay. Uh, oh. where there's a way, where, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> right, okay, that means right. something about sucking mints. Uh, hook, line, and good thinkers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so which of these you choosing? Uh, uh, I'll have the, uh, the, is that important? What, you want, you want to do it now? I was just oh, gonna yeah, 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 come on, let's give it one now, yeah, come on. All it's right. Christmas you open one, come on. Uh, you know I don't like anteaters. Why? Okay, so I should just point out to people <laughs> that as far as Carl is convinced, the stories that he's about to relate are absolutely 100% true. Yeah. You be the judge of whether he's seen them on the internet, of course they're true. Go on. Anteaters, yeah. Why don't you like them? I've told you before, I just don't, sort of... It annoys me that an animal's named after what it eats. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need yeah, it. it didn't choose it, did it? Yeah, but if there's nothing else that it can be called, it's like, oh, what's it do? I don't know. What's it eating? It's eating ants, right? Let's call it an ant eater. What, it's not, what, not good enough. But why are you annoyed at it, though, for someone else calling it being lazy? Because it obviously doesn't do anything else. Do you know what I mean? But what, what do you want to call The Chartered Surveyor? Well, whatever, just the proper name. What's the proper name? Well, I'm just saying... But tell me an animal that's a proper name to you. A beaver. That's pretty good. <laughs> Why is that a proper name? It doesn't matter anyway. That's that. I don't understand what they're right, about. Right, you, you and Anthony have got issues. Okay, I don't. Sometimes I genuinely don't understand what his thought processes yeah. are. Go on, right? Okay, and Anthony, you don't like Anthony is because they just eat ants and that's what they're named that's after. Go on. Right. Um, <laughs> do you know that <laughs> an ant eater yeah. can uh, stick its tongue in and out 160 <laughs> times? In a minute. No, didn't know that. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's rubbish. Thanks. No, but do you think that's good? Because I, I, I don't know what, what, what do you mean? So I call Norris McWhirter? What do you mean do I think that's good? What, compared to what? You see, I, I, I read it and thought, so what? So it's interesting. Well, we think so what as well. So, so you still put it down as something interesting to tell me? <laughs> no, but it's the fact that that is meant to be amazing. I did, I did one four eight last night in a minute, right? <laughs> Square record. Oh, well, hold on. There's my nipple. How many could you do if you if, if it meant you had to touch my nipple at the end? Two thousand pounds. <laughs> Baby Bear, Nights FM, one hundred four point nine. We do talk twaddle. Oh, gosh. I mean, it, I don't know why we haven't got. Compl we haven't got any complaints, have we? No we've listeners. Had, we've had one. No one listening. No, it must be that, because Kilroy, he, he's probably got a big show and he's, he's all over the place, yeah. but, you know, he's, mind you, he, uh, you know. 
I'd be annoyed if he'd have said that about me. Yeah. But it's gotta be careful who he annoys, cause he would end up having to move in with Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is Salmon, he'd, uh, is he still on the run? No. No, he's out. I've, I've, I've seen him twice. I think he's out all the time now. I bet his flat's a pigsty. Sure. It was not neat when he was living with 400 CIA people yeah, yeah, and a yeah, couple yeah. of yeah. You, uh, remember he went into hiding, I, I think it was mid-80s, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, that's all right. He went into hiding, he was in there, he was hiding, basically, surrounded by security guards, confined to his flat for about ten years or something. I thought so, yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of his missus? <laughs> yeah, are you annoyed? Well, I mean, man alive, she's like a sort of, I think she's like a former Miss India or something. Stunning. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen a picture of him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might be a great man and a talented writer and an intellectual fella, but, Jesus. Do something with the beard. Well, well, yeah, but he's busy, isn't he? What? He's busy writing and How stuff. did he pull her? When he was just basically in there? In his flat? I don't know. Internet? <laughs> Possibly. Just, just <laughs> got to know him and then uh, she kept saying, send a picture. He goes, no, no I'm not sending a picture, come round. Yeah. Read some no. of the books, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. She goes, well, I, yeah, now I'm in love with you. Let's have yeah. a look. All right, well, I'm in love with you now, so. Yeah. You know, he's you. going, got me own place. <laughs> got me own place, yeah. I got, I got a few staff. <laughs> yeah, there's a few other exactly. people hanging around. Exactly. Don't, don't worry about you it. Know. I'm in a lot. I'll tell you something else that'll annoy you. Yeah. Stephen Hawking, not only married, but dumped her for his, uh, Nurse. Extraordinary, isn't it? So he's pulling birds left, right and centre. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's true that I, you know, I mean, not so much now, but years ago I was not the ladies' man. That you are now. Really. You weren't sort of suave and sophisticated. You oh, weren't, no, exactly. You weren't the James Bond type that you've, uh, I wasn't the James Bond of TV comedy. Cause I remember, I remember I Carl, when he, you first met him about three years ago, what did you think? Just a bit odd. <laughs> I love it! And that's coming from him. I know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, it used to really annoy me. You're talking of, do you remember there was that story, I think it was a world record breaking attempt. There was a bloke, I think it was up in a car park, in a pub car park, oh, in sort of Leeds or something. No, right? Mansfield. It Mansfield. was a car park in Mansfield, and he broke the record for being buried alive. Being buried alive. I mean, and he was literally in a casket, like, in, not David Blaine, out in the lovely yeah. sunshine with loads of Jonathan Ross waving to you. Yeah. No, none of that. Paul McCartney calling Sorry, you yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, he was buried alive, in the dark, with just a tube yeah. for communication. I think he was, buried about, he was buried about ten feet underground. He, yeah. There's a tube which they, people would communicate and send and stuff And put down. water down and-, and, and I remember that. reading the story, I, kept, I was interested in it, I remember reading it, and there was one element of the story. You would think it was going to be a cheap holiday. Well, <laughs> you're not, you're not going to pay those prices. 400 quid, hope seasons, you're having a laugh. That's nothing. <laughs> Mansfield Car Park. And, uh, there was another one. It said in the, in the news report, it said that while he was down in the ground, he began and ended a relationship with a woman. While he was down there, some fan who was a fan of what he was doing, he started communicating with her through the tube. They, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they began a relationship and it ended. And I have to say, I remember thinking, you know, it, when you read that there's a man- How did it end? Well, Why I don't Why did you that this isn't working? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's twice you've stood me up. Yeah. Well, I'm- I can't get out, can I? But I remember thinking at the time, you know, I- I was gonna say, I was not the sort of the ladies' man that I am now. I remember at the time reading it and thinking, there's a bloke, you know, he's pulling women ten feet underground <laughs> through a tube. Through a tube. I'm- I'm, I'm out and about- Yeah. With some of the most expensive hair products <laughs> on the market. <laughs> I've got to sit down and ask myself some very serious questions. Oh dear. Extraordinary. I don't know if he did the- if he did the, um, the- the, the world record attempt. I don't know if he broke it. I don't know how that happened, but, uh, good luck to him. I don't what, know do, what do you mean a hole though? Like, a, like, what? The, the, a proper thing or is he moving about? How big is no, it? No, it was just that- I think it was just buried alive in a casket. I don't know, just down there, probably down on his back maybe, just waiting for little bits of but, water. But could he get out if he wanted to? Well yeah, he could say, can you get me out? He couldn't just leave and then come back. There was people- So wa someone's there then? Uh, no, they buried him and said, <laughs> wow, we better go back in a couple of weeks, see how he's doing. What do you mean someone's there? Of course there's someone there. Norris McWhirter for one, I'd imagine, going, three days, <laughs> just a few more to go. And what, why- Is, is it Norris or- part? Who's- who's alive? Russell Norris? Uh, I think it's Norris. Right, yeah. Yeah, it annoys me about all this sort of, you know, getting in a hole and in a box and all that and people going, oh, that's- that's good. I mean, if he was doing something when he was down there, making something or whatever, you'd go, that's- that's quite clever, but I don't understand all the fuss about- I don't know, people are just making a fuss about things that aren't that clever these days, it's just- you know what I, I mean? I don't reckon he beat Anne Frank's record. No, I think she's got the record. I know, yeah, and she did something, she wrote a book. She so, you must be- you must think that she's pretty good then. Yeah, but at least she did something. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. 
That's what, that's what I mean. There's some fuss, um, about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. Right. <laughs> Someone's walked it. That's harder than going on a bike. <laughs> no, it's not. Of course it is. Of course it's not. Of course it is. Not okay, uphill. Better than riding about on a bike's better than walking everywhere. Even not uphill. Well. No? Don't agree with me. Mm. Why do people get off their bike and walk it up a hill? They don't always, I see people. No, but why, why do they? When people yeah, are going up a hill saying. on a bike but they get off just and push saying, the bike. Just saying. No, what, what, why is that? It doesn't matter. Cause it's, do you think it's cause it's harder? They go, I'll tell you what, this would be a lot easier on the bike, but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a bit of a challenge. I'll get up and walk up this hill. Then, you do Go along then, clap for her and that. You know what I mean? When someone's doing a London Marathon in a car, you can go and clap them because that's just the same as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's not hard. Play record. In So Alive, Ryan Adams on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, for the last time. Well, you might do some other stuff later. Some oh yeah, I mean, yeah, stuff. For, for a little while at least. Well, we won't be around for, yeah, foreseeable future. But yeah. better things to do, bigger fish to oh, fry. Oh, well, you got your music show that you'll do, that's really good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And the other radio stations are more interesting. Just, I think we've just got enough energy there for the last 35 minutes. Yeah. We've given him a lot, Steve. We've, we've given him a lot. We've come in here, week in, week out, every Saturday. Never late. We've always given them, you know, 30%. Every, 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 really, <laughs> really <laughs> we've got oh, 30% yeah. of energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, how did that start? People going, you've got to give 110%. Yeah. I just, it just, my heart sinks when I go, oh, hundred mm. percent. Oh. I say, um, you've got to give hundred percent. So I go, I can't. I can, I, I'll give, i tell you what, I probably won't even give a hundred because you never know, but I'll give as close to hundred as I can stand. Yeah. And that's, that's all I'm, I'm saying that to a, a drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to give nearly a hundred. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's more than, you, more than most I think you'll find. <laughs> Maybe if you appear on Celebrity Factor. Well, I don't think I need to, do well. I? Carl, do you think I need to go on that? Hmm. When you had your nipple out. It was a bit, it was pointing it was downwards, was it? A little bit. Even, can though, I just, even though it was erect, it was pointing toward uh, my knees. Can I just, um, point out that we've had more requests for Carl to kiss your nipple than we have answers to Rockbusters? Ain't gonna happen. Well, <laughs> <laughs> show, Carl, you've got to give the punters what they want. Uh, in the webcam, and just a little, a peck, a little peck oh, on the nip. A little, little Carl, peck. Carl, that is just out of order. The show oh, must go on. You've got to give people what they want. I'm doing it. Why? Why not? Why not? What's wrong with lips it? on nipple? What's what? up with lips on nipple? You hear about stuff like this, and then like I might enjoy it, and the next thing it's like Suzanne, can you leave? Because do you know what I mean? I like fellas. That's like an episode of Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, I'll tell you this. this. Pilkington, are you thinking oh, I'm th thinking exactly the same as you're thinking. I was reading the paper today, the show's been axed. It's axed. But they're keeping the show on at the same time. It's gonna have a different name, different host. Hello. Pilkington. Come on. Hello, welcome to Pilkington. Oh, Carl, would- what would you do- if we give you a subject, will you just run through what you might say about it, or what questions you asked? What sort of stuff Okay, sort of like, um, okay, um, Steve- Steve's, um, uh, fifteen, I'm fifteen and my dad wants to have a sex chain. So I'll- I'll play the dad, right? Um, uh, okay, I, I'm- I'm Jeff. Um, I'm Jeff from Luton. I'm, uh, a fifty-four-year-old plumber. Mm. And, uh, I've decided- and this is my, uh, this is my son, um, Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you sure to be Paul? Yeah, I thought it'd be Paul. Okay. Yeah. Um, so ask me some questions. So what- what- what's- what's going on? Um, well, I just, I, I'm not happy with this body. Um, I've always felt that I was a woman trapped in a man's body. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, Very I just, I just, I just feel, I think I'd be happier, um, as a woman. And, you know, it's, it's for him to accept it, really, because I'd have accepted anything that he wanted to do or, you know, and it doesn't change well, anything. Like no, I know, but I mean, it won't change anything. I, you know, I still love you and I'll still be your father. Um, I can't believe I agreed to come on national TV. I'm gonna get <laughs> <laughs> taken out of me at school. Oh, really? Well, I'm alive. Well, you know, with that, you've got to go through lots of stuff. But I mean, don't don't think of me any different. What does Mum think of all this? Well, Mum Mum doesn't. She doesn't want it really. But I mean, she. I'm not. I'm 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 not gonna throw away the knob and bollocks. I'm gonna keep that for her in case she ever wants to use that. But I just I just don't want them attached to me. I'm gonna have them off. I'm gonna have some lovely pair of tits put on, and a, a nice little minge down there. But it doesn't. But I'm not bent. Mm -hmm. I still fancy 
I still fancy my, my wife and that, and, you know. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant! That's what? your audition for Pilkington. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what can I say? I'm not a doctor. Right. But what would you want? Come on, ask me questions about what? Discussion. Oh, no, I'm upset with my dad because he wants to become a woman. But what say something like, well, dear, but you I mean you've had a son and he's going through an awful day. Should, should you think of him? Shouldn't you put his feelings? Should you think of your son before you go doing that? Yeah, but if I'm not happy with who I am, how can I live a lie? I, 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 I'd go through my whole life living a lie just, just because he might go through a little bit of embarrassment. You know, he's old enough. Um, to realise now that, uh, you know, I love him and, uh, I just, I just need, I just, I just need to have some tits and amends on me. Well, thanks for coming in. Oh, Christ it's almighty! Well, what, 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 is oh, he, uh, on. is he a woman trapped in a man's body? No, they want to oh. talk about you. They yeah. have to go there. Uh, yeah, so, right. is it disappointing? Go on. Anyway, Rockbusters, right? Uh, right. First clue was, uh, a Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Yeah. Right, that was a cryptic clue. The initials were DC. Yeah. What is it? Come on, no, you tell me. It's, uh, it's Define Comedy. Alright? Define Comedy? It's a Divine Comedy. <laughs> Alright? What so, is that? <laughs> That's well, just, do the accent again, do the accent again. Oh, it's just divine comedy. That's the answer. Do the answer again. Do it again. You've got the answer. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Right. <laughs> Second one. We should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, Great Sofrendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. Why Go is on. that? E S were the initials. Go on. Elec trick six. Right. What? Elec trick six. It works. So don't say it like that. <laughs> what? I, don't, I, don't, what I don't know what it means. Right. Well, there's six people there who do tricks and that. Right, I'm saying we should vote for them, so you elect them. Yeah, but he said elect. 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 Trick six. No, elect though. Elect. No, elect's not a word, is it? And the last one. Uh. Really, elect's a word. Elect. Steve. You mean Alec, do you? It's not Alec Park. You're not trying to do Alec Park. The one. Third one. Steve, what did your dad do? I don't know. That was E. Could work for anyone. It didn't have to be Steve, right? That was uh, Erasia. Right? Erasia. Erasure? No, it doesn't work either. It doesn't work either. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Who's the winner? None of them work. None of them work. Another pile of crap from the for the mind of little stupid. Oh, I'm gonna give the prizes to. Don't be little. I'm gonna give the prizes to Martin Williams from Flintshire. I don't know where Flintshire is. He says that he's promised to listen to the Lord of the Rings, and by listen he means sell them on eBay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, um, God. thanks for coming in. Stupid. The end of Rockbusters from the stupid little shitty brain. I'm going to say it of Pilkington. <laughs> Possibly my favourite song of all time after the Gold Rush by Neil Young, and that's for um Carl's Lookalike Boyd, um who's uh actually on Justin Lee Collins' show after us. About five. He's not really a look like. It, I, oh, it is. Yeah. He's got a bald head. More <laughs> <laughs> <look> like Gandhi. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's in the toga. He does a little bit. I don't think Gandhi wore a toga. <laughs> no, no. So what are you? Uh, what, what did he do? Oh dear. What he did just he sat around. To be honest, Carl didn't want to get involved. Didn't do much. Just said, let's not, don't have a go, just be careful. Yeah. Don't go mental, don't start fighting, let's all calm down a little bit. He's the one in the pub that goes, okay, stop this, stop mucking around. Um, we were educating Ricky earlier, Carl, I wonder if we should resume that, as the clock is ticking away. Alright, uh, you've got two bits of info that you could be, uh, leaving the building with today, right? You've got, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I have that one. <laughs> Um, they've brought out this drug or, uh, sort of tablet or something. Yeah, he's and, got to do it then, yeah, go on. <laughs> carefully researched. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah. which means, like, an eight-year-old woman can have a kid, what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. What are you like talking drugs. about? You can inject a woman with something, eight-year-old, and it means, you know, she's, she's got more time on her hands now than that. It's better to have a kid. She can have a kid later on in life. <laughs> I just realised, where there's, where there's a wheel. <laughs> yeah. Very good. 
<laughs> Very good. Right, well, let's just move on from that, because it's clearly drivel. No, no it's, it's not. I think it's a bad idea. Of course it's a bad idea. Mm. If it, even if it, I'll give you- I'll even give you that it's true and possible and might no, even- it's, it is true and possible. Okay, it's, well, it's not even recent, it's like a few- few weeks old. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's terrible. No, you shouldn't do it, yeah. Alright, what's the final educating Ricky? So far, I'm not impressed. Get her a cat. Yeah, but get her a little pick of these. Don't get her, don't let her have a, a child. Yeah, but it's meant to get you thinking, like- like you're saying, well, she shouldn't have a kid. Oh. Well, the time is five, she'll try and pick it up and her arms will break. Whose arms? Moving <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on, what's the next one? <laughs> Would she get a breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she'd be able to do it standing up while he was on the floor. Talking to Nipper. <laughs> Come on! There's a lovely juicy pair over there. Okay, I think this is the last show. People should actually phone in and speak to Carl and try and convince no, forget him. forget that. Yeah, what's the number, Steve? Oh, uh, well, forget that. We've got time. Yeah, he hates answering it. We'll, we'll, we'll do it during the record. Leave it, leave it, leave phone it. in if you want to speak to Carl, if you know the number. Call in, try and convince Carl of his wanna. little nipple. Don't want to. Yeah. Right, what are we doing? Are we, uh, What's the last educating, Ricky? Come on. Um, Hook, line, and good thinkers. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, sounds good. Go on, what is it? Um. <sighs> They've uh, found a lot of fish with two heads. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, <laughs> don't know. What, what do you mean they've found a lot of fish with two heads? Who has? They've been messing about, basically, these scientists and stuff, yeah. and they've said, look at this we can do. Mm. And they're making loads of fish <laughs> with two heads. They actually, they can do it now, and they're saying, it's good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? <sighs> Alright, play back with them. Yeah, but what do you think? I well, think if they can do that to fish, they should try and do it to you, and then at least you'll have two brains to work with. Yeah. And we might argue. I'd love you arguing with yourself. And you end up just, you're walking on the street and you're just head butting each other. Just cracking, it will crack heads the in the squeezing fun you'd have for really. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd bang them together. It'd be like one of those Kanakas you <laughs> strap yeah. at the playground on the string. I'd just whack them together. I hit you out of the window, didn't I, to see what the noise meant today, mm. didn't I? Yeah. What? Just if I had two heads, right? <laughs> 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 would I be able to sort of. Do shifts. Do you know what I mean? Say, say if, say if this is a start or something, they're trying it out with fish and that with two heads. You'd be two different people. You, you can't think like you're one. It doesn't make sense. That you, if you had two heads, you'd have two brains. You'd have, you yeah. know. Well, that's all right. But say if we did the same job, well, we'd, we'd be doing the same job. Yeah, you could. So you could say, right, you work through the night. But you'd, 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 you'd both, you'd take it in turns to do your job badly and moan about it. Yes, it'd be fine. That's He's giving it some serious thought. I know, yeah. And so is his other head. <laughs> yeah. But also, they're saying there's like a fish shortage, and mm. I was wondering whether they're doing like they're trying to make that better. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, well, as, like as, a... as the as the head is a bit you throw away, it'd be perfect. No, <laughs> but when they do a head count like they do, that's what they do. They do like they a... they, what, they count fish. They get a fish. Go, okay, just in the line. One, two. I think you're fine with one, sir. Don't, don't answer back. Rick, um, I should just point out that I feel- <laughs> Don't answer back! Come on, I think Carl, um, has offered nothing now. I think those educating Rickies were appalling. Don't and the rubbish. only thing, the only thing that would redeem the show is if he keeps getting nipples. Because oh, it's nipples. 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 Nip
Carl yeah. puts himself in a film. Claire's on next week, by the way, and then, uh, Adam Joe. Yeah. Then Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Adam and Joe coming back. So that's excellent. They're excellent. All right. Matt Lucas said he'd do a show. Give him a call and maybe him and Dave Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Big things of the chat. Might do that. Yeah. yeah. Very good, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be alright, yeah. Right, uh, the film thing. Uh, this is when we get, like, a film. And, uh, I'm in it. Right? Uh, so I'm doing, uh, we talked, you know, a bit about gay fellas and that today. Yeah. So we're doing, um, when Harry met Barry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, and listen to this, and then there'll be a question at the end, and you can win some more stuff. We've got DVDs. Some more shite. Right. Some more good CDs and DVDs and yeah. that. All right, let's hear it. So uh, when Harry met Barry. All right. Yeah. About eighteen hours ago, before we hit New York. And I uh, brought a few books just to kill a bit of time on the journey. When I buy a new book, I always read the last page first. That way, in case I die before I finish, I know how it ends. I read a book like that once. <laughs> Not on purpose, though. It's just that all the chapters have been put in the wrong order, so it's a bit annoying. Got to chapter one before I realised. Are you finished now? Yeah, I, I bought another copy of it and read it in Lanzarote. It was all right. Good read. Listen, um, we're only staying in New York for a couple of days, aren't we? Because the place does me head in a bit. Oh, really? Yeah, it just, just stinks, doesn't it? It's a really dirty city. It's noisy. It's funny, the people who live there call it the city that never sleeps. I'm not surprised with all the noise. I couldn't agree more. Listen, I, I know you're gay in that, right? What, what is the attraction? with New York for you, like, what? Because it is like the, the gay capital, isn't it? They, they all love it. Even that Rod Stewart song, you know, that Killing a Georgie, that was set in New York, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, well, that song was about a gay fellow, wasn't it, who moved to New York and ended up getting beaten up. Not a great advert for the place. You keep going there. Weird. Actually, I know why you like it. It's, cause it's, it's because it's a city that never sleeps, isn't it? You look like going out late, you sort of run your life at a different timetable to everyone else. Are you finished now? No, oh, I'm not being funny, I'm just saying. I just, just don't think you should live your life like that. That's Why not? Don't start getting angry, I'm Oh, just... I think I'm entitled to throw a little anger your way. Especially when I'm being told how to live my life. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it is your life. And that's what I'm saying, don't be dragging me into it. What? Well, you know I'm not gay, so why did you buy me a butt plug for my birthday? <laughs> not gonna use it. What do you want me to do about it? I take it back, okay? I take it back. Want to spend the night in a motel? No. Why not? Because you're all gay and I'm straight, that's why. Why aren't you seeing anyone? Well, you, I'm seeing Suzanne again. We only split up for a few weeks when she had that funny haircut that made her look like David like a slave. It's grown again now. You look weird, didn't you? Well, but forget that. Anyway, don't want to share a bed with you again. That after last time. Oh, jeez, what are we supposed to do? Well, this isn't normal, mate. Pull over. All right, all right. Uh, forget don't you... I don't want to talk about it. How is that pull over. Just pull over here. My voice is... There's nothing. Yeah? I'll get a B and B. And by that, I mean bed and breakfast. <laughs> that bum bollocks, as you call it. Yeah, right? one thing straight. Not interested. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear! Excellent. Oh, little Carl Pilkington. When Harry met Barry. Uh, it's a classic <laughs> film. <laughs> what's the what? Um, <laughs> what song was I talking about? That you know. Uh, yeah, we know. New what York song? Was you yeah, we got song. Yeah, okay. Ah, this will do. Oh, the song title. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Email uh, only Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. We can squeeze in a tune, and then I hope. Oh, my Final news. Monkey news. Oh, oh, what tune have we got? How long is it? Three minutes. It's a nice one, man. Brilliant, brilliant. Bit of Amy, man. Fantastic. Alright. Red Vines, Amy, man. We've been playing uh, some of our favourite tunes, and uh, after Monkey News, Justin Lee Collins, we're going to leave you with one of our mutual favourite tracks of all time. We won't say what it is yet. We won't say what it is yet. It's, it's, uh, it's a little surprise. Then Justin Lee Collins is in with little Boyd Hilton, Carl's twin brother. Uh, the answer to Carl's quiz question. Carl, what was the question? It was, what was the song that I was talking about in that, uh... Harry Met Barry. Yeah. With Billy Crystal, uh, The King of Georgie. Yeah, Rod Stewart, Stewart, Stewart song. And uh, Stephen Farron from Essex wins another, um... DVD bag of and stuff. Alright. Alright, well, this is the final one. Um, play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, ya! Right, well, uh... 
This monkey news story, right? It's about, uh, this fella. A couple of fellas in Texas. Yeah. Uh, sort of running a, uh, running a farm. Yeah. Right? Just gonna say, they definitely fell as well. How tall are they? Can we just, okay, they are human beings. These two are human beings. Times against the three. They're running, running this farm and that. And, uh, anyway, so they're outside getting the cattle. And he turns around, right? He says, that cow's. A couple of monkeys walking about. So he knows what's going on, right? So anyway, so, it's in Texas, they don't know what to do with the monkeys, there isn't a zoo, it's fairly barren there, isn't it, you know what I mean, not much going about. Yeah. So the other fellow who runs the farm with him said, look, we need a bit of an hand. Right? So, uh, he said, let's teach them some stuff, and the monkeys were happy with that, because they were lost anyway, right? So they had- They had nothing to do. They were bumming around, they were looking for work. They'd hide in their home, they'd fly yeah. out of their way. Maybe it's like the Hulk, they're like the Bruce Banner <laughs> wandering <laughs> around, going, oh, I need some, need some work, you won't get angry, will you? So no. anyway, right, so they taught them, they taught these monkeys how to ride off. Right. So <laughs> they both got a- Sorry, you, you're sure Charlton Heston's not gonna pop up? You're sure you weren't horse. watching a video last night and thought it was a documentary? They've both got a horse each, right? They've been given like a little lasso and all that. Oh, yeah. don't talk right. shit, Carl. So, anyway, it's going well, and it carried on for about two years, this, right? It's it like, good. you know, r rounding up the cattle over yeah, there and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the two fellas are chatting going, it's worked out well, hasn't it? All right. Right, if there's a hostile takeover and they sort of like buy up 51% of the shares so or something. So this third, for this to continue, the monkeys are getting old a bit now. We need a, we need a little wom woman monkey in here to sort of get some kids going for like the future farm yeah. people. Forward right? planning, yeah. So they get a little woman monkey. They in. decided to only to hire monkeys <laughs> why not? Why not? It's working. Why mess with something when it's not broke, right? <laughs> so they get, they get the little woman monkey in. Uh, they have kids and all that business, right? Mm. But the problem was, right? When they first got the woman monkey in, it was like, well, which one's gonna have the woman? Right. right? So, they started sort of fighting a bit and what have you. Yeah. Because they'd seen the owners of the farm, don't, they'd like Don't tell me the baby monkeys didn't want to go into the family business, one went off to be a lawyer. <laughs> they had a bit of a shoot off. <laughs> Shut up! They got two monkeys, right? And don't tell oh, Because they'd seen the owners, they'd seen the owners with guns and what have you. Yeah, 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 no, no, that sounds So they had a, bit of, had a bit of a shoot off. Yeah. That's how that, that's how they sorted it out. And who won? I think it was George. The one called George. Right. So they had, I think they had 17 kids. The farm's still running. So, that's, that's like the, the last little monkey news, uh, good little Rick, happy ending to that one. if you were to rub your nipple against his lips while I held him down? Right, come off it now. Come on. No, I'm not doing it. Bruce Bridgestein, Thunder Road, last trap on next up then, Bruce Bridgestein. You can check this all out on the webcam. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I saw I got fingers! Get his arm out of the way! Get the arm out of the way! This happened on scum! This is- <laughs> <laughs> Mary's dress sweet.